members, staff, members of the gallery, welcome to the council meeting for Tuesday the 26th of September. And in welcoming you, I'd like to acknowledge that the land we've been on today is the traditional lands of the Kaurna people and that we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Kaurna people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and that they live, their cultural heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Kaurna people today. I'd also like to read you the council pledge. We seek wisdom and understanding as we face the duties of our united task, praying for the peace and prosperity of our city. Please be seated. <coughs> Before I get started, I've uh, given this by the CEO to share with you, and I'll pass this around. But thank you to the City of Prospect, because our new logo on the front looks so a lot like our old one. Uh, but uh, thank you from a school visit we had, so it's really nice to get a little thank you letter. They've all signed it individually. Um, some of them with love hearts, and uh, that's the you see. Uh, <laughs> so very, very good panel up here the next uh, information report. Um, declaration by members of a conflict of interest. Do we have any members who wish to declare a conflict or interest tonight? No? To be the case, we'll move on. On leave, we have nil, and apologies, we have nil. Uh, confirmation of minutes for the ordinary meeting of council for Tuesday, the 22nd of August and the Special Council meeting for Tuesday the 5th of September, and a Special Council meeting for Tuesday the 12th of September. So I'm happy to move all three. Thank you, Councillor Lee, who should speak to it all. Do I have a seconder? I'll get the Mayor, a group who should speak to it all. Do I have any further debate? All those in favour, against carriage announcements. Thank you. <coughs> the Mayor's report is there before you on pages one and two. Are there any questions? If not, I'll seek someone to move it. This is presented. If you may speak to it, I've got a seconder. Mr. So Lee, just speak to it. Any further debate? All those in favour? Against carried unanimously. Have verbal reports from council representatives? Are there any verbal reports? No, that being the case, we'll move on. Petitions, we have a nil. Deputations, nil. Motions and notice, we have two. Item 9.1 from Councillor DeBacker. A traffic announcement in Collinswood. Collinswood, that would be the correct. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't moved it, it just was just incorrect. Yes. Um, so I. You don't stand in no, here. No, no, no. Oh, we don't have to stand in here. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Um, we're in a trial. I will not abscond you for not standing. And if you ask me an illiterate law counsellor, we are st you are still required to stand, but we are in a trial. So. Okay, all right. As you wish. See how it feels. <laughs> so, um, so this is in response to um, some co uh, correspondence that I've had, and, and basically what I'd like to do is move that um, a report be provided to council um, on the traffic conditions in Edward and Avenue and the possibility of introducing new traffic control measures. <coughs> um, so Edward and Avenue, if you're familiar, I mean. Um, a lot of us use it, um, and it was a shame I wasn't able to put something <coughs> up on the screen today, but um, if you have your maps in front of you, you may choose to use them. But along North East Road, um, you'll notice that Edward Avenue has a bit of a dog leg in it. As you go towards the Hampstead Hotel, um, Edward Avenue has a sort of bend in it. Um, though it isn't categorised, and I'm sure the um, assets and infrastructure team will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's not classified as a narrow street, but you do get parking along both sides of the road. Um, and what tends to happen is because people are, are perhaps turning left onto it or turning right onto it, um, and you've got the bend, the, if you have a, a long street, I guess you can see ahead and you can pull to one side, that doesn't necessarily occur. Now, I took the initiative to actually go on um, Location SA Map Viewer, which has data for crash crashes, and obviously I'd like this to come back in a report, um, but that showed there was about um, 12 crashes and about 15 casualties, I mean their injuries, so fatalities or anything like that. Um, but it'd be really interesting to have a look along, say, Nottage Terrace and North East Road. Um, I know there is an LATM process, but it seems like there's a, some time has passed since that's happened. And I think we have to understand that, um, you know, there has been development that's gone on, not just 
in our city, but also in places like Moorsgate. Um, so I think it's really timely to sort of think about how we address our traffic issues, and especially along um, <coughs> Terrace, um, North East Road, which are Dipti roads. So how we're going to go, um, and in, I guess how we're going to um, police it and how we're going to respond <coughs> to complaints, considering we're kind of not able to action anything that's on the road. So um, I'm open to um, changing the motion if someone wants to strengthen it or add something to it, um, but I think it would be valuable um, to get some information, timely information. Thank you. Have a second. Was that a question? <laughs> um, it's well. I'll ask a question first. Yes. My my question is: um, Can I expand this motion as I'm seconding, or do I have to wait and do it because it's more than a one street in that area? Mm -hmm. So I'd like to. Um, I'd either second it, but particularly increase it. So. You can't, you can't, so to answer your question, which is. Point of order, you, you, you can't change it as a seconder, either do that beforehand or as an amender after it's actually on the floor, it's not on the floor yet. No. I'll second. All right. Yes, yeah, yeah, for the sake of um, uh, further discussion um, and uh, because uh, supporting my fellow elected members, I'll second the motion. Thank you. Wish to speak to any further? Um, no, thanks. Right. Back. Okay. Um, why I wasn't ready to have anything written down for someone. I'd, I'd like to amend it to include what's been the problem for quite a few years now that I've been raising is there's one, two, three, four streets that I think should be included into that. There's the North East Road <coughs> and Raglan, Rutherglen. Uh, Rutherglen, sorry, mm. and Galway, so as well, and I believe to find an answer. Okay, so so it's not a simple little change. Can I suggest from the chair that uh, that be, be changed to say the traffic conditions in the precinct, which in the precinct which contains that Edwin Avenue. North East Road, Brother Glen and Galway. Yes. Because there's a bit in that little... Yes. Precinct. Is that the intention, that you want to have that little precinct? Yes. <laughs> That's the main one in there. Okay, thank you, Councillor Harris. Okay, like so, I'm moving this as an amendment. So, moving as an amendment, I'd like. Hang on, I can ask if you wish whether the move a second. I you indulge you. You have me to do that. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm happy to end. Okay, so on the seat leave of the meeting, you're happy to change the uh, the motion to incorporate those changes. Seat leave of the meeting was in favour. Against, it doesn't incorporate it. Sorry, absolutely. Okay. Um, it's not one that's come up in the last 10 minutes. It's come up over the last few years. And I would say a good 60, 70% of the people in both streets have complained. I didn't know about the accidents on the one we were initially talking about, but I do know next to the Caltex one there's been seven collisions this year. So it's a problem that comes in. The real problem comes, and I know people have looked at it, is coming, and I didn't say it up there, which is a blow, North Street actually should be included, but I'm not going to do that at this stage. It's the North, North Street traffic into the Galway traffic into the beginning of these ones right at the initial sort of thing. We've put speeding devices down there. We've changed lines down there. We've done a whole lot of things. But one of the main things, and it would really upset people, but I think it's amongst the answers, is this turning off of Main North East Road into it. Now, 
<laughs> unfortunately, it's a break and I've used it and things like that. But in, in reality, on that end of the road, which is the western side of the city, is possibly looking at data with regards some sort of restrictions on that end, either coming in more so than going out. The other end, it's going to be harder where North Street, Galway and that is, because I don't even have an answer for that end, but that's where it begins. And so that's why I've included these things. And I raised it before we had the last traffic management. I raised at that time I went into hospital and we placed. So I've been raising it for quite a few years, years now. And it comes a really hectic place that I think it, I don't have an answer but I believe we should, should be looking at it to find some sort of answer. It's a very bad area. Thank you. Further debate on this item? Councillor Yeah, I agree with the, the, the notion that needs to be looked at. There's, um, the one thing we need to look at is where are people going, why are they going that way, and if they want to go down Edward, why can't they get where they're going anywhere else? And, and I think the, the, the solution is that most people would really like to turn right up Galway. Um, cause, so what they're doing is just zooming down um, Edwin to get to Galway. And if we could actually, it's, there's no right turn at Galway. And, and I think that's, that's the major issue, is if they can't do what they want, they have to turn either Rutherglen or, or Edwin. And I, so I think probably the, the major solution will be, you know, lobbying for a, a, a right hand turn into to Galway, but I, I support the notion that we and do some traffic studies and um, see what there is and see where people are going, why they're going that way, and how we can actually make them go the right way. Okay. Thank you. Further debate? Um, <clears throat> thank you. I'm going to the motion. Thank you for bringing that. Just a question about the LATM process to the, to the appropriate person, <laughs> that might be. Um, when, can someone just remind me when the LATM consent this area last and when they might consider it again next? My recollection from the Chair is 2008 or nine was the first precinct and it did suggest closing North Terrace and uh, North <laughs> Street as to, to stop the east-west uh, commute. Um, that was rejected by some residents, embraced by some and rejected by others. Um, my, Right, 2007, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, 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 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, sorry, am I correct in assuming that we haven't looked at it through the, LA, through the LATM process since 2007? Was the first two precincts and the nine precincts we divided the city up to? So yeah. we're, we're, it's meant to be cyclical. So when are we due to get back to yeah. That was the next question. 2017, I think. Um, so I believe that a couple of years ago there was a budget bid for this precinct. <coughs> Fortunately, through the budget deliberations, that wasn't supported. Um, but we have um, got it planned to bring it to council again as part of the 18-19 financial year. Thank you. Oh, just, just to say, I think, I mean, if we're looking at three, four streets or the area four streets and it's an issue across the precinct, my preference would be to look at it across the precinct, not just because uh, you, you can't deal with traffic issues in just one street without affecting every other street around. Right. So I think we need to this in, not in isolation to areas, but it's a broader piece of work across the whole area, but I'll put that out that maybe another time. Um, so I'll certainly support this, but when it comes back, if you could to understand how to get into the LATM process, or maybe even a better process than the LATM process for that. Are they on Any further debate? Just from the chair, it wouldn't surprise me if the staff came back with an interim report. There are some obvious costs associated with this that's not included in the motion. We want to heard people talk about traffic studies. We're going to do route mapping. We heard about this on Main North Road with the right hand turn. Someone has to sit there and record traffic. Oh, sorry, number of plate numbers and work out where people are going to and from. Um, this is a complicated issue. I think uh, Councillor Harris spoke well to that. Uh, um, but uh, it is a network issue, it's not an Edward Street issue. So it uh, would surprise me not being words to see CEO's mouth but they come back and say, this is a process you've asked us to embark on. Are you comfortable with that? So. Okay. There's no further debate. Back to the movement, which is summer. Um, so, I mean, just to um, thank the other elected members on their comments. So, it, it is a precinct issue. 
And it's also, I would agree with Deputy Mayor, it is the LATM process that we currently have the best one to use. Um, and obviously we're talking about hazards and injuries and danger. And so for me that sort of raises red flags if, if people are getting injured on the near our roads. Um, so, and of, I actually looked at the crash data and 90% were right hand turns. So that indicates that's, that's where the issue is. Um, so look, I'd, I'd be supportive of something coming back to us a bit earlier than the planned LATM. Um, and look, I'd really like to see some of these traffic studies sort of embedded into our long term financial plan so they're just done as a matter of course. Um, but, um, yeah, so I'd encourage you to um, and um, get some figures back to um, council. Okay, thank you. Lose the vote. the vote. Hints is carried unanimously. Next uh, motion notice is item 1.2 in Batchy Council of Tobacco. Um, so again, I'm sitting down. I might stand up in a minute. Um, this one, um, I think. It's, it's emotion, <laughs> uh, it is emotion, but I think this is one that the community is really um, concerned about and we, we, we love our tram barn um, and I just wanted to move that um, the council endorses the adoption of the following principles when considering the redevelopment of the prospect tram barn. So honouring and preservation of history as per council development plan, heritage conservation. Now you will notice that there are attachments, so I'd suggest if you do have the attachments open, you can refer to them. Um, adaption for community use as per council's strategic plan to 2020. Quality design and sustainability as per council's strategic plan to 2020 and engagement with City of Prospect residents as per Council's strategic plan. Two, that the invitations of expression of interest for the sale of 82 Johns Road and 218 Main North Road Prospect, incorporating the tram barn, include the above four points. Three, that the project executive group meetings continue, I'm just going to change the wording here, continue and be accessible to elected members. Four, an appropriate governance process is established for consideration of the expressions of interest which provide um, the opportunity for elected member participation. And five, and again I'm going to change the wording again, Council notes that any future sale or lease or options of 82 Johns Road and 218 Main North Road Prospect will require a council resolution following consideration of the preferred tenderers. So I guess just to speak to the motion a little bit, um, we know a little bit about the history of it that's detailed um, here before us. Um, but we'll note that um, we've actually sort of delegated the Chief Executive Officer to commence the expression of interest process um, for the redevelopment of the site, um, including future use of the tram barn, in particular for community use or benefit, exploring various ownership or tenure options. So in this process, um, and it is, a, I guess, in a way it's a commercial process, but it's still a community-owned asset. Um, and in that process, unlike the CLIC um, project, which has a reference group, um, I think the community, and I'm not, not just um, the Tram Barn Alliance, but also our business community, our residents, um, our traders along uh, Main North Road, um, would really like to see um, how they can contribute to this expression of interest process. Um, it's an opportunity for the city and I think there's been a lot of focus and attention put on this particular site and I know we have a um, agenda item coming up that we can't talk about but what I would really see, like to see 
in this expression of interest um, process is really exciting projects. They might be a little bit off the wall, but if someone's talking about it and for the last six or 12 months, I haven't really heard anything. So I think if we can get the community involved and excited about what's possible and just create a bit of buzz around um, what could be on that site, I think that would be a great thing for the expression of interest process. Um, I said there's been mentions of creative spaces, um, co-housing and we've had presentations to, to council and I think you would all agree that for a legacy for the community, um, there is cost but there's also value and I'm really concerned with giving value to our community um, if we're choosing to um, sell or lease one of our council assets. So I, again, I'm open, open to you changing some of the wording um, but I'd hope you'd support um, me in this motion and our community and their participation in the expression of interest process for the tram one. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Yeah. Yes, uh, I'm happy to second it because um, uh, I think as, as Councillor um, DeBacker has um, explained uh, and um, there has to be a community benefit for the mm. site because we do have one of our local uh, or state heritage um, items on there. It's not something to be taken lightly, I don't think. Um, you know, if, if we think down um, 80 or 90 years uh, to come, uh, what have we done here uh, with this council? Um, you know, where is our um, uh, our um, our value system, like it's explained, we went through all our strategic plans and our development plans, put them out to the community, and if we only pay lip service to those, um, I'm very concerned about that. Um, I'm, uh, I, did, I was concerned, I must admit, I did not want us to be in this position of selling it, but if uh, we now it was moved uh, by majority vote, so we have to then go that extra step, I think, and do everything. Yeah. No, I think it would be an absolutely exciting um, project, you know, instead of to start, you know, an old barn bit of land blocked off for money to pay for here. Um, I, I really think that's the wrong approach. I think our community uh, has been quite uh, sort of vocal uh, in that it wants something special there. Mm. And we have to be able to communicate that um, to the people that we want uh, to be able to come on board with us mm -hmm. uh, to do that. So I uh, support um, the motion. Thank you. Have an update. That's allowed. Can I ask a question? <coughs> so, um, I like the, the four principles that have been outlined here, but I, I'd just like a little bit more of an explanation with regards to what the second one might, if we say that that's, that's endorsed as, as a principle, what does that actually mean? Um, because I've had a look at attachment to this whole list of things there. So I'm not, I can see what the others mean, that's quite clear. That one there is a little bit broad and I'm just a little bit uncertain about what that might lock us into if that's endorsed as a principle we have to apply. So can you, at, at risk of giving the mover ample yeah. opportunity to speak numerous times, uh, the mover will need to answer that question in a summing up. Because oh. I think that's that's a good question. Is that question two or staff and see whether you're able to write any mm -hmm. one of the directors. Any definition around what that might mean? Um, look, I'm, I'm happy to to do that. I think it's worthwhile having some better information. The the principle I think is supported by Council Strategic Plan in relation to ensuring we've got access to a whole range of facilities for our community. The Council has an, a, adopted a motion to um, sell the, the site in order to attain as much funding as possible for the redevelopment of a new, development of a new library and community facility. So in essence you, you've provided targets for the organisation to achieve in order to be able to deliver 
on the new project. The, the, whilst the principle has merit to actually indicate adaptation for community use may tie the expression of interest to promoting only community activity for the tram barn versus what has been spoken around the chamber about opening it up for more public access to the point where there have been some suggestions that it could be used for a retail activity or, or a, um, a, a entertainment venue which would actually expose the public to the site and particularly to the tram barn in a much greater way than it is at the moment which is basically locked behind our gates. So, um, I might stop you there yeah. because there were two parts of the question. One is what does community use mean and what might work out? That's obviously not what we're saying. Yeah. <coughs> you have a follow up question at all? Or anything further to add? Um, is that, yeah, just repeating what I said before, the other ones are quite clear. With that one in there as it is, it's a little bit difficult to know how to support that because it's, I really just don't know what that commits to or doesn't allow us to do. The other ones are clearly principles, that one's a decision to make. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Lee. I'm kind of struggling to understand the motion. I've to look through it and look through it and look through it. And everything that's written here is pretty much covered in things that we already have and we already do. So honouring and preservation of history as per Prospect Council well the 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 tram barn is protected under heritage and I don't see how voting for that part changes any law. Um, um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, the adaptation of community use. If, if that's the case, then um, I know like there's arts um, people that would like to look at it and stuff. Maybe they have an opportunity to use it by, by raising funds and buying it. And I know that sounds really harsh, but um, this is private sale. I'm really struggling to understand lots of things. Here. Quality design. Well, we have a development plan, and it goes up before our DAP. Any um, or the DAC, anything. Well, it's not DAP anymore. Um, but anything that is proposed for that site has to go through checks and balances anyway. Um, engagement with the City of Prospect residents as the council strategic plan about what? It's a private. It's a private um, sale. I don't understand that. Bit. Um, the invitations of spread, the expression of interest um, include the above four points. Well, it's a private sale, and I, I, I mean, we can put caveats on certain things, but if you said it has to be for community use, we'll kind of be laughed out of town and told to do that ourselves. The project executive peg group, it, it is access to the elected members. Um, the appropriate governance process established for consideration of the expression of interest. I don't actually understand what that means. Is that so that every single elected member has a say in who buys the site? So that needs to be clarified. Um, and there's always a council resolution when we consider preferred tenders. It's brought to us and we vote on it. That's the, the whole point. I actually don't understand the point of this motion because we already have these things. Um, and if people, if community people want it for community use, then they they they, they have the opportunity to buy. And we have done nothing with the site for decades, nothing except park trucks. And can't afford to do anything with the site. And I don't think it's just about raising funds for it to pay for this site. I actually think people, so other people can do much better processes for this, this site and make it a much better place other than a car park. So I can't support the motion, mostly because I, I don't get the point of it. But thank you. Any further debate? Can I propose an amendment? Councillor Edwards. Uh, could we insert the word, so, so item 1.2, um, adaptation for community use, after use, could we insert the words or benefit? And, and and that if the so I guess that broadens its interpretation slightly. So for instance, if there was a, a, a food or beverage tenancy that was proposed for the site, it could demonstrate that that would be a benefit to the community. Um, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, 
guess, just to speak to it. Um, all right, but to pick up on, on some of the points of, of Councillor Lee, I mean, the, the governance around this does raise a bit of a question for me. We've got a very tight governance framework around how we're doing this whole transaction, the CLIP project, including Main North Road. This is slightly outside of that governance process, and I, 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 I do have some concern about the way it's come to us. It hasn't come to us through that governance process, and so, so, so that, for me, is, is a bit of an issue. Um, in terms of what's actually said, I, I supported it. It's broadly speaking what we agree to, um, you know, and, and what we've been discussing as well. Um, the, the issue of community use is one that is is a little bit <coughs> open of interpretation. I think, particularly when we're talking about selling it, what does that mean? Um, and and so, with the words "all benefit," I think that becomes you know more broad in terms of its application. Um, I, I'd be inclined to support it because it doesn't say anything we're not already doing. If we can insert those words. Or benefit, um, but to highlight again, I, I have real reservations around the government process of how this has come to us. It, it's a process that I think is, is best left to the proper um, governance framework that we put in place um, that gives people the opportunity to have their say. Um, this does concern slightly, but that's Thank you. Before we depart, I've moved an amendment, but we'll take the liberty to take out the advice and move a second if they have an important move. Well, you don't have to. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. And that's the need to report that change. That's the vote. Carried. Of course, you're itching your ear. Or well, that's just, it was just a simple vote. You can't ask the question. You've had your speech. But anyway, we had enough to say that it was carried. It doesn't um, But just a reminder, because it's a yes or a no when you're here. It's not a kind of a maybe or a mistake. I'm sorry. That's how that works. Um, and uh, that then becomes the motion. Do you think further you want to add, Councillor Evans, in your... Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, look, uh, thank you, Councillor Evans, for that amendment. I think that makes a lot of sense. In fact, the, the resolution of council, which I think was a unanimous decision in March, said something along the same lines, in consideration of future use of the tram line, in particular for community use of benefits. I think that's consistent because I would hate for us to make a decision tonight that is inconsistent with the previous council because that cause all sorts of issues. Um, but look, I've got a couple of issues with this and a couple of things uh, picking up some of the, the thoughts around, um, you know, this kind of makes sense because it's what we agreed we would do anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of 1.2, nothing's been said on that, but I, had, I did have some concerns with how that was written. 1.4, though, I'm a bit confused about because I'm not sure who this relates to. And I'm slightly saying that Councillor Tobacco will respond to in the same up. But as, as written there, this is creating an obligation on behalf of the purchaser to engage with City of Prospect's residents as per Prospect Council's strategic plan. So <coughs> I don't want to be cute about it, but that's actually how I read it, so I'm not sure if others mm -hmm. read it the same way. So we, I don't think we can obligate the purchaser to undertake um, engagement with the City of Prospect's residents as per our strategic plan. I'm not sure how we do that. Um, the, and so that kind of leads me to number two on the list, the invitations for expression of interest for the site, <coughs> include above four points. Um, I have a problem with that fourth point still in there because, well, going back to that point. So for me, 1.4 is out, 2 is out. Um, in terms of 3, 4 and 5, I don't think... Um, I think they're things we're doing already, so it's a, it's a bit of a moot point to understand the, the reason behind the motion. But they are things that we're kind of doing anyway, so from my perspective, you know, we're, the peak is continuing to meet and the members. Um, it comes back to council anyway in terms of our governance processes. Um, so I, I'm, I don't think they're necessary, but I, I'm not going to vote against them in that, in that way either. One of the things I'm interested in, um, and maybe something for the mayor to comment on, is whether we can take this apart in our voting, uh, because uh, I guess my test is always, can I support everything that's in the motion in order for me to support it? If I can't, I default to no. Um, if I can, I default to yes. Uh, maybe taking it in parts would be a way that I could at least express my interest and support in some of the, some of the, uh, the points, but not all So I'm happy to take it in. Well, this is tricky because there's parts and parts. That's I right. I'm, I'm, I'm usually pretty amenable with taking it in five parts and not to taking it in four parts of part one. I think there are limits. Um, so I'll take it in five parts unless someone wrangles me to the ground with some sort of snake or a stick or something. Anything further, Did you mean? How long have I got? Okay, 
about another two, two minutes. Um, look, suffice to say that I, I'm really confident and comfortable with the arrangements we had in place in terms of governance of the project, in terms of the way we're operating this process, uh, particularly in terms of uh, what we're trying to achieve and, and it was the agreement by the majority of council that would go down this, this route. Um, I, I am just a little bit concerned picking up, I think, the theme of somebody else who spoke, I can't recall who, that we don't tie ourselves into one particular use. So for me, just going back to number two, even with the amendment, um, community use, and, and we'll be argue, it could be argued whether it incorporates this or not, but for example, if we had a housing development on that side, it, would be, it could be argued that that's not community use. Now, I, I wouldn't be unhappy to see a housing development so I would incorporate the tram in some meaningful way for those residents, but that would be, as I see, a private value or private. So I maintain, and now whether that's a community benefit by having a part of a property for the residents who live in that property, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I can't kind of take myself to that point. So I'm struggling with two even with the amendment just because it does prohibit some opportunities on that side, which I think would be quite positive. And I think community members would think it's quite positive. So what it does is only allows um, effectively public community access to happen on that part of the side. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I'm concerned about that. So if we take it in parts, I won't be voting for, for part one because um, I can't get across that, which means I can't vote for part two, but we'll be supporting three, four, five. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, you did raise a matter about a meeting in March to start with the wizardry of uh, well, our filing system on the website, <laughs> have found what you're referring to. CEO, I just want to clarify the point that the Deputy Mayor raised about a motion in March. Certainly, so the, the matter in March was in relation to calling of expressions of interest for the sale of this site. And the motion reads, the Chief Executive Officer is authorised to commence the expression of interest process for the redevelopment of the site at 82 Jones Road and 218 Main North Road Prospect including consideration of the future use of the tram barn, in particular for community use or benefit, exploring various ownership or tenure options. But it is, does, doesn't um, mean that it excludes other activities. So it's a more inclusive way of saying you'd like to see some community benefit and or use of the site as part of the development. Okay, thank you. So it has been something moved pretty much along the lines of asked to be incorporated by Councillor Evans, already in place the staff already found to make that happen because it's our resolution. And I'll just speak briefly from the Chair. Um, this is an unusual motion that it looks like it's capturing what we're already doing. Uh, and in that way I commend the mover for moving. Um, but it is, a, it is a motion that's troublesome because there is a risk of it duplicating what we're doing rather than echoing what we're doing. And when we make laws in this chamber, we have to be very careful that we don't trip over ourselves because complying with the Act and our community obligations is already hard enough from the government's perspective. Uh, and I'm very keen that um, we set up processes which are robust, uh, that we already have had motions on, a lot of debate about these matters, and that we don't risk having to comply with the Act and our process we've already set up, such as the motion in March, and another motion which we asked for in this month. So. I'm waiting to be convinced yet, and maybe the summing up the mover can convince me, um, but I, I, am, I do think there's, there's a risk attached to this motion. Uh, some of the risk is, is, is because I'll go into a couple of things in a minute, but I think Deputy Mayor's put them pretty well. And other is simply because it's saying things that we already do. The CEO will be obliged to check what we've already decided to do and then check that we're not uh, we're acting contrary to what we, if we just get, just gets up, what we decided to do in September. And I think it's a thing we don't need to put our staff who are already doing, in my view, all of this anyway. And I, and I think Councillor Lee put that pretty well. Um, item uh, three, that the project executive group meetings continue. Well, I'm not sure if anyone, no one's proposed that they not continue. Uh, there has to be a structure to run through uh, the whole process. So the mover and summing up could it, you know, have to lure that threat to us. And I've been so yeah, but I'll give you my full intention that I have no intention of letting the CEO not have those meetings. Um, that they be accessible to elected members who were committed here, I've committed to you, that they will be open. And in fact, uh, Councillor Barnett and the backer are regular attendees at those meetings. Except for the one this Tuesday, which is where we discussed 
the wording for the information memorandum that would go out to the expressions of interest where we talked about the language council would use to describe what we wanted, which is where we spoke about community benefit and sorts of things we're looking at. At that meeting, I regret to say, the council of the you were not present. Perhaps you're right at this motion, but the time would have been better spent at the meeting. Maybe there was yeah, there's another, no committee meeting no, note, so I can't a, refer to it. Maybe there was another reason for it. There were regular meetings. But that's the meeting where these things do get into the existing governance framework, and that's why I just think there's a risk of duplication. But there's already a process. An appropriate governance process to consider the expression of interest, that is through the PEG, and it has to come back to the members, which is item five. It has to be a process to sell it. We can't sell an asset that are coming to a council resolution. Now, it doesn't get sold unless we agree to sell it with a majority vote, hopefully a, majority, hopefully a large majority are unanimous. Okay, so item three, four, and five, I think, what are you doing? But I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm hopefully the mover can convince me about the merits of item one, I think council lead challenges to say we already do these things. And if we want to uh, subscribe uh, or prescribe higher thresholds for the purchaser, we would need to do more than simply point out our strategic plan. Because uh, our development plan is the lawful means by which a developer can apply to get things done. If we want to bind it in contract, then what other things would we bind in contract? This, this, isn't, this is a bit too generic to make that um, I think meaningful. Um, getting it into the information memorandum is the important bit, but us assessing the offer when we choose to sell or lease or not sell, that is the critical moment. If you're not happy, then you don't vote yes. It's, it's as simple as that. Uh, in terms of the community use, that's probably the one that troubles me the most. Uh, and we haven't got a community use for it. It's never been used for a community use in its history other than for occasional events. Um, we haven't got any budget to use it for a community use. Uh, and so we've decided that surplus to our requirements, that's the decision that, that we've made. Um, I agree, if somebody wishes to purchase it for community use, I notice and acknowledge Joe Jackley here running for the Labor Party for this seat, if you're able to find some money, God bless you, uh, get some in there. Uh, or, uh, or Jack Condis, uh, um, uh, recently awarded a recognition in the, in the, uh, in the Australian A, Prince Jose Honours, uh, in the arts industry, if you can find some money to purchase it, make a use like that, I think that Fabulous. But I don't want to exclude someone making it into a pub, which I think this council is a great idea. It would be a fantastic pub. Or what about making it into a couple of retail outlets that specialise in, like R and Williams, pretty magnificent. <coughs> what about a vintage car place? I mean it's about the, the only car I'd consider on that bit, but to use that in that context I thought, you know, I thought maybe that would be terrific. Ideas we haven't thought of and won't possibly think of. I think we have to be very careful that we maintain a very open mind about what we uh, put to the market with our strictures around it, which we already have covered, and then when it comes to council, we decide what we want to do or not do. Those options are all available to us. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced to support it. And council, I'm going to hand back to you in a second, to see if there's anyone else wants to make a comment. So I, I remain here, willing, listening to you uh, to get me over the line. Uh, thank you. Is there any further uh, debate? Councillor Stanton. I'm happy with the redundancy in the in the process. I think it um, adds another level of checks and balance, and I, I think that's a good thing. Industry, yeah. <laughs> that's very short. Thank you. Right, I got a couple of things, and I've been waiting, listening to Monica or Councillor Lee, and waiting. I always get worried when people say a building's heritage and it's saved. On Friday, I was sitting there at the market and my wife was in the market and I'm looking across at a Commonwealth Bank, I think it was, where Solomon's was, looking particularly what I can still remember of the woman's creation, the first one here in South Australia that was heritage listed and it was the facade there with all the stones and everything and uh, to make it easier to build a building, they temporarily shifted the stones and that out to a person's property in North Adelaide and this council has dealt with those people, that particular people before and it all disappeared and it didn't happen again. A heritage listed building. I know heritage listed building that was in Hutt Street in the back of a place doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. So I have grave fears when we have a heritage listed building that it gets saved. I know the rules might be there and I've seen a lot of them and I understand them, but I, I 
don't say I distrust everyone that does everything because I don't, but uh, it is possible to do. So I have that fear that that, that can happen and we can keep looking at it. A benefit to use, and, and I, I am actually going to agree with you, David, with a couple of things that you said, maybe a car plug, <coughs> some sort of special hotel and, and those things that can fit in and it would be a benefit to the community. So I still feel that can happen and take on what Mark said with some of this, that it just gives that extra check and balance. Um, all of us sitting around the table, in fact, in one year and one month, we might not be sitting around the table and someone else is here. So I just like that bit extra that ties people into it. Um, my personal view of a benefit to take what you said, Mark, my personal, um, I suppose to call you counsel, not mate, sorry. And my personal view is it might never, ever be what I want. And it won't be because I wanted to, well, I nearly swore I'd take that back. I wanted a library there. I wanted the library to move across the road. And reality is that's not going to happen and it moves. And I cop that on the chin and it moves from there. But I want to still see something, if it's possible, into that community. Developers are very good. They will build something. The ultimate aim, even the best developer, the ultimate aim is to make a profit for either themselves or their members or whatever, you know, and it's there. And it doesn't mean they're bad people. It means that's what life's about. So if we still have that final crunch and hand on a tool, I believe we keep it right to the end. I, I do take, Deputy Mayor, what you said, and I, I get worried sometimes with words and it's too much Yes, it's not. If we can just put a little bit extra, it comes. The final thing I'm going to say is that community benefit and that if, if we hear there's people sitting here and, and different people next week and, and things around, if they go around and they and they and people talk to other people, say, gee, I think in the main that council needs that money to do the next development, you know, for the benefit of the city, needs that, but in their heart, they want that to be still part of. So someone's going to wake up. I would have last Thursday, but I didn't win the 50 mil, so I missed out, and you all missed out. But I still support actually as a whole, or I do take on what other people said to go with. So I'm hoping, and you don't have to convince me because I am convinced that I think we should all vote yes. I think everybody's spoken. Yeah. Am I allowed to sum up other people's comments or respond? Yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you for your comments, and that's that's good. And and look, um, I agree with some. Of, don't disagree with some. Um, but just to a few points. Um, just in the first line, that the council endorses the adoption of the following principle when considering the redevelopment of the prospect tram barn. It, is, it doesn't say to the exclusion of other points. So I know through our, our um, decision making process, we often refer to a matrix and that guides us in our, our decision and it makes us accountable. Um, and I think to listen to our community and at least corp incorporate some of those points in our matrix will help guide our decision and I think it will be a better one for the community as a whole. It may turn out that the expressions of interest don't tick every box. And look, that, and that's fine, that's the reality. However, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. And I think this is the opportunity. And it is, again, a little bit to reinforce some of the things we're doing. But certainly um, engagement with the City of Prospect. And again, if you looked more broadly, not just residents, but community, I want to be a champion of that site. And I think that has to do with our communication strategy with that site, we're so focused on the click, and that's the big shiny new thing, that we've actually, I don't think we're champions of that site and saying what's possible there. And it doesn't have to be by us, but it's actually putting people together for the possibility of something that's really good for that site. Um, and again, and just re referring back to the governance process, it's not a Section 41 committee, so there are no minutes. We do get notes, and I can hear back. <coughs> there were comments in regard to the, um, and I may have missed 
understood, but again, um, the engagement of the new development team that the PEG meeting might not meet. So I was I was unclear, which is why I wanted clarification. <coughs> so it might have been my misinterpretation, but that's why that was in there. So look, I mean, it is a consideration for these points as part of our decision making process to listen to our community, to their love of history and aspiration for that site. Um, and I look, I'm really excited, as excited as I am for the new CLIP project. And I think that sentiment needs to resonate from us as a council out for the expression of interest process. So it's not seen as something we have to do in order to fund this. It's something that we want to do on both sides for the benefit of our community. It doesn't necessarily have to be done by council, um, but you know, we've got our enthusiasm and we've got our community's enthusiasm and I think we should capture it in this motion. Thank you. That concludes the debate. I've sort of taken in parts, five parts. So I'm going to ask people to vote yes or no, not ear scratching or whatever. So <laughs> each of the five parts, starting with part number one. Those in favour of part one. Two, three, four, five. Part one is carried, not announced. Uh, part two, all those in favour of part two. Part two is for and those against, just to check. Those against part two. Still, I'm going to take that vote again, uh, but there is, um, I, can't, I can't keep taking the vote all night. Uh, those in favour of part two, those against part two. Part two is carried. Part three, those in favour of part three. Those against part three, part three is carried unanimously. Part four, those in favour of part four. Part four is carried unanimously. Yes, got it in favour? No, so those against? Part four is carried but not unanimously. Part five, those in favour of part five. Uh, five is carried now. <coughs> okay, thank you. That concludes the debate and those five items have all got up, although not without, obviously, some dissension, uh, which is rare. Uh, thank you. We now move on to the next item, which is questions with notice. They're being nil. Questions without notice are there any? And sorry, while you're thinking of those members of the gallery, if you'll hear just that item, that, that's the end of discussion about that item, unless there's something else in general business is right at the end of the meeting. So. If you, if you wish to leave now, we won't think any worse of you. If you wish to stay, we'd be delighted. Up to you. Thank you for your interest. Uh, questions about those other end? Stay out on there, Pauline. I was going to right, okay, move on. Item 12 <coughs> is the list of reports. <laughs> Okay, so the protocol we had for some time is still in place. So I will call over those who wish to pull out items, please say so, otherwise they'll be moved on block. I'm 15 foot one to project update in the Community Hub Library Innovation Centre. Click. Anybody wish to withdraw that? No, I'm 15.2, the Fund My Neighbourhood Grant Program. I've asked that to be withdrawn. There's lots of clarification requires, which is why you have a couple of handouts on your tables. Um, item 18.1, development of public realm compliance options. Anybody wish to draw that? Harris. Item 18.2, community engagement and charter, the discussion draft stage one. Anybody wish to draw that? Good. Item 19.1, appointment of director of Eastern Waste Management Authority Board of Management. Anybody wish to draw that? Good. Item 19.2, the local government association annual general meeting notices of motion. Uh, I wish to withdraw that. Six and clarification. Uh, the 19.3 draft leasing and licensing policy community consultation. So the backer. Uh, 19.4 office closure Christmas period. Anybody wish to withdraw that? No. 19.5 the draft general purpose financial statement says that 30 June 2017. Anybody wish to withdraw that? 
No, 19.6, Civic Centre and Depot Transitional Arrangement. Centre, which you call it. That's all about. 19.7, use of a common seal for the funding deed for Alexandria Street Road reconstruction. Is anybody useful for that? No. 19.8, discretionary rate rebate for village heart marketing funds. Anybody useful for that? No. The discretionary rate rebate for general rates. Is anybody useful for that one? Yep. Sorry. Sorry, can I? I, I, I know it might be a little bit out of order. The business about Rose Street, where's that? The end. That's, that's 1912. Oh, little screen, can't see yet. Sorry. Uh, 1910 is the 93 Charles Street prospect. Anybody wishes to draw with that? Yeah. <coughs> 1911, the review of the waste tender. Anybody wishes to draw that? And late item 1912, Rose Street Public Realm. Councillor Harris, you wish to draw that or are you just interested? Uh, in yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Not for much, but yes. So it's not on that, on my iPad, is it? Uh, no, it's, it's separate because it was sent out late. Uh, um, so you've got a separate email about that. I, I, I've seen it, but I just couldn't see it there. On the, I understand it's on the agenda papers as on the website now. So if you want to, <laughs> gone far enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, that's on the move on block. Uh, 15 .1, 18.2, 19.1, 19.4, 19.5, 19.7, 19.8, and 19.11. <laughs> we're speaking to them when they move on block. We have a seconder. Yeah. Um, Harris, all those in favour? Against? All those in favour? Against? Carried unanimously. Get some oil to your elbow, shoulder. Okay, first item put out was item 15.2 to fund my neighbour with grant program, the first stage ID submissions. Recommendations on page 15. Uh, I asked the staff to provide more clarity to this item. This is a new process launched by the state government. There's been a lot of work by the LGA on our behalf to put some shape and sense around this program. Uh, given that in the first instance, the uh, program exposed councils to having things built on their land and having to maintain the perpetuity without the council's permission, which the LGA have after very sensibly said, uh, I don't think that's a good idea. So the local government association has been trying to put um, a, a process in place where the councils get a chance to say whether we'll endorse these bids or not. Um, so that's what's before you tonight. Um, but there were some costs included in your report. Uh, those costs uh, in your report are council estimates, but not the bids from the bidders. In my view, we should be looking at the bids from bidders because that's what will go up on the Fund My Neighbourhood site so what people will judge and the staff should be commenting on whether that is the right amount or not a viable amount or there's some problem or not with the amount. So you now have a bigger spreadsheet which lists in the first column whether there's actually been a cost estimate provided. Secondly, what we estimate will be, and then whether the administration recommend that we say yes or no, and then some other aspects such as what would it cost us to do a year and what would the depreciation cost us. Those of us who have been a long time know that we get given an asset, it all looks nice, and we're going to depreciate it day one. It's not very nice, but you know, that's what happens. Okay. So you've got that in front of you. And, and we have the um, prints off the actual site, uh, the Fun One Neighbourhood site, also on the A4 hand at the top, so you can see the bid from uh, whoever it is. Um, it's mostly, some from elected members, but mostly other people, I understand, et cetera. Just one elected member. So does it come from good people in our community? Um, but whether we think the idea is good or not is up to us. Uh, so uh, um, I've given a bit of an opening at the end on why you've got extra information. Just wondering whether any of the staff wish to provide a further briefing on anything at all or whether we've had it for a week. Okay. So can we then ask a quick question? Um, I think it might be from uh, suspending 
and many proceeds until 8.30 should be needed. All those in favour of that, hence the case. Yeah, so ask questions at will. <coughs> which, which one's will? <laughs> oh, okay, Will. Uh, just simply then, what, what we're going to do here is the ones that uh, the staff sort of recommend in this, uh, unless people say different. So if it says no, we don't recommend it. And if we say yes, so is that what we're after? Is essentially, yeah. And essentially, it is up to the council to determine yeah. which ones you may wish to support. But the staff have provided you with a recommendation, yeah. um, principally around, I believe, whether, uh, first of all, whether there'd been a, um, a budget identified by the proponent um, and some difficulty in actually understanding the range of costs. So, for instance, the proposed wetland, um, I think the applicant sought $100,000, but that could be from anything from 100 up to 500 or wherever. You know, it really depends on the scope of investment that you want to make in the, uh, in the um, uh, proposal. Uh, we're guided by you. This is happening, this approach is happening right across the state with a lot of councils considering these, which we would then confirm to the state government that the council was prepared to accept them. Uh, and then actually uh, move on to the next stage, which is actually the voting stage, where the community votes for each of the projects. And essentially, it's a volume vote. So the more votes your project gets, the more likely it is to receive funding from the state government. Who, who votes on it, sorry? Anyone. The community. So it's so almost like have your say website. So. Uh, people will use their own networks to encourage their network to vote for their uh, project and or projects that the people may want to support. Mm. So you don't answer it with your yes vote in the same envelope? No. <laughs> no. In fact, you have, I, I think the way these work is you have to go in and allocate the entire quantum of money to as many projects as needed to spend the money. You can't just go in and vote one for yours. I think. Anything else? Alfred? Well, just maybe my suggestion would be then is to go <laughs> down the list of these yeah. and get to that. Any other questions about where we're at? Process? Marvel, I, I do. I'm quite curious as to where they got the um, <coughs> where they got the figures here because I know uh, we've got. I actually submitted one of the ideas that's that's in the list: the picnic table sunshade, and we've got. Twenty thousand dollars. So does that council's estimate of what it was cost, yes. what it would cost? That's the column it's under. Yeah, cool. Because um, I know for a fact that the proposal I put in was for thirty-five. Because I had to pluck a figure out of the air in the middle of the night. So as a test, for instance, because I asked Beck this question, and I said, the, the, I have no cost on application. So where where did you put in your thirty-five into the? Into the when it said it estimated cost for what you think it'll cost. I originally had. 25, went back and thought that's not enough and cracked out another 10. And so that when I put it in, it was actually neither, it was never 20, it was either 25 or, or 35. Put in for a minimum of $10,000. Uh, if you want to put 2,000 or 1,000 as a resident, you an idea. You can't. It's this big red thing coming up. You can only put in a minimum of $10,000 at the start. The information we were provided by the state government, so they collated all the information, broken into councils. That information was not provided to us, council standards. So on your application form, we don't have that information. Otherwise, it would have been on this. So that, that's interesting. It's interesting we can see some transparent, you know, we can see behind the, the, the curtain, if you like, to see how it's working. Um, so when you say... <laughs> you can't. Yeah. No transparency. You go on. Well, no, but we can see that there's a, there's, there's a disconnect there, can't we? Um, so when you say the other one that, that I knew that was probably going in was the, the playground in the, the Mawson Street part. So when you say $200,000, which I think is quite, quite reasonable, we don't actually know what the applicant has, has put in. So they might have thought that $30,000 was enough for a couple of pieces in a park. So what happens if we get a disconnect? What happens if they think thirty thousand dollars is enough for a park, but we know for a fact it's going to be for a piece of playground equipment, and we know it's going to be two hundred thousand dollars? 
do we get if it goes through? Do we get thirty thousand, or do we do we get what it's actually going to cost? Our, our submission back to the state would say this is a re realistic value to be placed on that project, yep. and we would seek to have that included. Um, I don't know why the information that that has been submitted either by you or the community members hasn't been provided to us. There, it clearly, as you said, there's a disconnect between the lodgement form and the sheet, the list that we've now got, so we can investigate that tomorrow. But my approach would be to go back to the, uh, the government and say, these are the realistic costs in relation to those projects. And on that basis, the council supported the, the, the uh, suggestion. May I suggest that we move mine up here on this thing to 35 so it matches? <laughs> we, we have that option. Is, it, is our endorsement? as far as they yes or no, or can we change aspects of the application? I'm not quite sure. The application would be based on the applicant, I would imagine. Right. So we, we, we would certainly be contacting the state government and saying, um, from our, our perspective, we would want that information. Um, I have one more question, and it's based around uh, once we go into the voting process, this becomes a popularity contest which is really based on whether you're a maven in your community and whether you can get huge amounts of Facebook people to to jump on board. I'm guessing that there's going to be a big thick end of the wedge where there's going to be projects that have got huge amounts of community support. One can only hope that there are a lot of thousand dollar projects and then all the ones that don't get a lot of support but still have to be done because there's a budget to be met are done by maybe people who only get a little bit of support. Is there any matrix or metric to, to how this is going to work or is it just a free-for-all? Yeah, free-for-all. Yeah, I, I believe the popularity contest sums it up relatively well. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trend. and. There's a comment without a, well, that's the answer. We've got a couple of people with questions. I um, yeah, so, so, so just questions in terms of can I just go back to that bit about how we find out On the very last page there is a second page of the board that has exactly the information on it. Yeah, I don't know why mine didn't come up. That's very so interesting. I don't understand why we've got the board here for you, we think they own that land. Um, but we don't have that same information for the others. Because they're a put in and they're an incorporated group and they included the APN. We looked for these all today and we could only find two that had the completed third page. Um, I'm not suggesting that the others weren't completed, but they weren't accessible by us through the Fund One APN. If you don't put an APN in, you get a red line comes up and you can't complete it. So. Broadview Football Club have put an ABN in and they has gone through to keep I did that. I did that. I put yeah. the council ABN in. No, putting council's ABN. But mine hasn't come up with the... I haven't... My yeah. figure hasn't been included. No, that's, that's not mine. Yeah. Okay. Can we leave... This is some frustration with you as well as me that we have the right information. Um, Christina, do you want to add? I certainly do. Look, this is, a, you know, lovely for sip participatory democracy and all that stuff. This is, I'm saying so many bells and whistles are wrong with it. Um, you know, I personally went on with a community group and they've done one that yeah. is an incorporated community, oh, group, so, like a community group. It's not on council land. So other residents contacted me and said they've just given up, you know, because it meant they had to contact uh, the CEO, get her permission to do it, and all the rest of it. Otherwise, they're putting in information that's not correct. You know, and you go on thinking, oh, I wonder what you know else is being put up in my community. You can't see it. There's one big fat blank. You've got no idea what other people are putting up, except what some residents told me. But they didn't think that that was getting up. They thought that had been rejected by council. Oh, yeah. Well, yes, they told me in a, in a Facebook Thank message oh. that theirs didn't get up because the council was really a big offence across yeah. St Helens Park. Yeah. 
So, yes, but why it's in there and why uh, a resident doesn't think it got up, I do not. All right. When, when, when was that? <coughs> The agenda's come out with a recommendation, but before that, then. Yeah. What I understand is that they're still, you put all these in and they're still sorting them all out. I mean, it's ridiculous to say that if you're earning something 2,000 and you've got to put in for 10,000. You know, so I've got no idea how they're going to solve all that. Well, there's structure. one here, one here for You know, it, it just seems as such a lopsided, I don't know, like. And I did ask for this sort of type of list going back about, what, three weeks ago from council and guys looking nowhere because residents were contacting me and saying, what can we put in for? What would council like to have the money for? <coughs> well, now we've got the list, which is great. Thank you. So I'm a little bit. Off. Yeah, well, I guess there's so much just yeah. conjointed. I agree. A council grant program would have been much more useful because we've already got strategies. Yeah, right? no. Okay. Anyway, so, so that's where we are. So we actually want to focus on the actual programs put before us. Yeah. So, Alison. And, um, yeah, just, I was just wondering, is it possible to lay this on the table? Because really, I just don't think there's enough detail around it and to make, I mean, if we're making decisions based on things and a system that doesn't work. Um, so, the question is, it has been done by the 6th of October, so it's not far away. But I, I would feel uncomfortable making decisions about any of this, considering everything we've heard. I, I agree. Um, I, I, there's, there's a few of the members in the same position, but let's just see how far we can get. Uh, and if we, if we, if we can't get to reason, Resolution tonight, just understand the CO would be obliged to call a special meeting prior to the 6th of October and to do justice to the good people who put these applications in. So, yeah. And CO is just advising that we are able to put conditions of our approval, so we can say we approve this subject to the following provisos, which you're interpreting, Kate, as saying uh, the budget's increased in the next month. Uh, um, I'm interpreting that because there's a whole range of questions here that we need to respond to in terms of uh, have we got a whole of life cost, what is the project likely to cost, so we can actually put the proviso that is subject to contribution matching what our view of the world is, uh, and there's also an opportunity to provide any other comments so we can expand why we would want that. Can, can I ask one quick, very, very quick question? Yep. No, no. Get to the projects. We have we have the contact information for the people who've submitted these. I think there's probably fair reason that we would be able to unsolicit, uh, contact these people unsolicited. Say we have received your submission to City of Prospect. <coughs> are you are you able to tell us what figure you put in? when you made this submission because we haven't been able to get the information. And if we could get that intel, that might help. Like if we know that we're looking for 200 grand for the play equipment, which I think is fair, it'd be nice to know how much they've actually asked for. I mean, I think there's, there's, there's just cause to be able to actually, you know, just out of the blue, email these people and say, how much did you put in? Okay. So... Putting aside those concerns, I want to see how far we can get with this. Uh, and if we can't get very far in the next 14 minutes, then we'll obviously ask the CEO to go back and work out another process. Um, <laughs> Sorry, just bring me. I think I'm missing the point about how much they put in for it because, in the day, generally speaking, most people won't have those playground costs, which say, say, shucks, as Shane said. My issue is more about the council. Um, process of actually understanding how much stuff is going to cost or the depreciation. So I'm just trying to work out if it's what they put in the red herring or is it actually no, not well if they've put in for hundred grand we've got to come and we get it and then we've got to it's two hundred grand. That's a whole lot better than if they put in they think it's going to be twenty thousand dollars and then we all of a sudden we're in for hundred and eighty. But they might they might actually be they might actually be informed and intelligent people. There was a website that you could go to. You, there was a, a line that you could call. You could ring a 1-800 number and you could actually ask how much these things cost. So a lot of these people might have actually rang that number and said, playground, yeah, uh, playground standard $100,000 or $200,000. 
Um, I rang it and it, would, it rang out because it was so busy. But there was actually a helpline that people could ring if they didn't know to find out how much things were. So but it'd be nice just to yeah, know how to... Just to clarify, I'm not sure people don't know these things. I still get surprised at the cost of the routes for it. I mean, you know, but yeah. things always cost more than that. I'm not making any assertions on people's capacity to um, work out how much. But we, yeah, but, but we don't, and we don't know whether they're informed or uninformed, or so, overestimated or estimated. Big disbelief for a second. Okay? <laughs> so I wanted to get the principal to protest. Some of them, some of them will support in principle, and others we won't. Uh, but there is a risk to go back to your question mark. So what if they get the wrong price? Now that's the risk. The risk is that they completely underestimate it because it's on our land. We'll be obliged to put a price up because we're not going to let the person bring out their hammer, and, you know, crowbar and dig a hole and do it themselves. And we say, well, it's worth five times what you bid for, and we can't do it. And they'll be disappointed. We won't get what we want. The government won't be able to quit the funds. It's just a mess. So I think it is it is quite proper that we say what is a reasonable amount to achieve yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. As we go through it, we'll, we'll see some that are going to be. Sorry, Dave. Just and it's not another question. Just what you just said. So this two hundred hundred thousand uh, uh, Irish heart thing. Yeah. If we say it's worth two hundred, and they've only put in a hundred, and the government gives them a hundred, I think what you're saying, or hope you're saying, well, you're not going to build that in the Irish heart because it's going to cost two hundred. So we're not going to have it. Well, I think we'll just get frustrated. So, say for instance, someone wanted to twenty to widen a road. It's half well, how much? You know, how much piece of string? Um, if they put in the wrong amount, they think they've won. They think it's going to be delivered, but they can't deliver it. We have we live the bank. No, that's what I mean. So, if they do that Irish half one, that's the question I'm asking, yeah. and it's going to cost two hundred thousand. We're not going to let them dig a hole down the bottom end of Irish half. Sorry, hundred thousand. Say that's all you can do. Yeah. Well, we just won't let it start in the first place. Our, these are all really good questions. I just designed the fund to all the process. I assume it's because it's our land. No one can do it from our land unless we approve it. Oh, yeah. So we don't have enough money. We're going to go all you're not, you're not going to start. Yeah. Yeah. On the form, you're supposed to get the approval of the CEO of the council. Well, that's what we're here for. Yeah. That, 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 uh, I mean, there was a bit of confusion to start with as whether they needed to get my approval or not. A lot of people lodged applications without actually doing that across the state. Just in terms of the variations, advice from the ODA says it will be possible for variations in projects to be negotiated later in the process when you re-spoken the proposal to meet strategic documents, manage costs or community expectations. Normal council processes will be observed if the project is successful in attracting community support, that being that we would still need to agree to do the project uh, and at that point we could seek changes to the scope. Um, I don't know where additional funds would come from though. This is one of the problems with having a, having a program like this established without really consulting local government in terms of how to deliver it. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, notwithstanding that uh, we didn't design a process, it's not coming to us, that, that we haven't put up these projects, that we don't know where it will end up, um, good people have proposed them and we're being asked at the very simplest level whether we would support it or not. Okay, And then I want to come back to the, the costs on the way through that um, start recommended costs to us. And I presume if we support something, they'll say to the state government, You'll only support it if this is the budget allocated to it. So let's start at the top. See where we go in the next nine minutes. Uh, the St Helens Park fence. We've got a fence right across the Australian Prospect Road, presumably the gates. We've discussed this here before. Those of us have been around a while and, and said no previously. The staff have assumed the same no still. Mm -hmm. No? No. Okay. Uh, Irish. Yes, we're saying no. Yes, we're saying no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Irish Park, Park East. <coughs> Which is the park closest to Church Road, I presume. It's my recollection of Irish Park Park. No, East. <laughs> Irish Hut Park East. Hang on. It's behind the Kingy. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's called East. Yeah. I think it's the eastern half of yeah. what is it? Yeah. Oh, the eastern half of the park. Okay. Park. okay. Park. <coughs> It does have a cost of it's of a hundred thousand. They clearly recognise it's a big lump of money, a big big project. Um, staff are saying it's probably more like 200000 
if we if it was two hundred, then we have to support that uh, as an improvement. That can I ask a question? Sure. No, just quickly. Can I like, just say with wetlands and natural play? So I think if there's anything greater than thirty centimeters, you have got to have like, some sort of barrier so kids don't fall in and drown and stuff like that. So does it have to be wetlands? I mean, how broad can we be? They have asked for it to be wetland, so I'm assuming we take it face value that that's what they want us to consider. Um, so if they say play equipment or play... The park at the other end up across the road has got a stack of water. Yeah. Got ponds and creeks. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, would it be, it'd be easier to build dry stuff than wet stuff, I'm assuming. I think the purpose of that is um, ecology education, so it's just behind the kids, so they can open the gates and go out there and... Have frogs or like, you know, water bugs and stuff like that. So yeah. that's what we're doing. We have frogs. What they've asked for is what we consider, not, okay. not what we think might be a better idea. Uh, at 200,000, are we happy to support that? But the council to start with saying, I recommend yes. It's a tricky one. Sorry, no. Start bringing me no, I'm getting it wrong. Yes, no. I'll, I'll. It's tricky though, because that, that's a, you know, if people go down there and run footballs and stuff mm -hmm. like that, so it actually minimises the space of green running space in that area, which is very useful. This is the east end, which is more of a bushland setting at the lakes. And that's why I got the east of the lakes. That's, that's, sorry about that. Uh, that's how I've taken it. In. There's this plain field type feel to the mm -hmm. left end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the east end. Yeah. We've got the frogs and the mosquitoes up at the other end. <laughs> we'll share them around. Uh, my view is we get 200 grand to go into a park and do something interesting. Well, I'm happy to support it. If there are ongoing costs. Uh, we, we did a full consultation of this park only a couple of months ago mm -hmm. and I'm just wondering how this plays mm -hmm. into that because you know there, there were some priorities that were identified coming out of that consultation. Mm -hmm. You can go and spend time grand money in a wetland that I don't believe was talked about. It's just a bit of a bad Okay. Are we going with the council recommendation then, which is a no? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. 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 They improve Myrtle Street. Return it to what it used to be and improve traffic congestion. <laughs> I really didn't understand this. It says put it back where it was. I, I can't I don't know that Myrtle Street's changed. I don't, I don't think, does anyone can anyone help me? Well no picture either. We only changed um by <coughs> Yeah, Vine Street's got a little change. Right? Yeah. <coughs> Stuck the trees out in um, Olive Street and Rose. And no, not Rose. Uh, yeah, Rose. Yeah, Rose. I, I didn't understand. So, yeah. Yes, but what, what do you understand this means? Yeah, what does yes mean for? Alex? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, the Myrtle Street one where the applicant says widen Myrtle Street. Widen. <coughs> Um, well, look here. If you read what she says at the moment, we're struggling to travel down or up the street between Prospect and Bourne Roads as cars park on both sides of the street. They can travel very difficult. A lot of people know that they used to pay. I think the garden area should be removed. The street back. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 um, for the street. Um, that's not what they're asking for. Okay, again, I'm going to be really strict here. They are asking to return it what it was and to, and, sorry, to widen it. If you look on the next page, they need to remove the garden. Yeah. The garden area should be removed and stripped back to what it used to be. Well, this ain't the merge. This no, ain't kill all the trees in the nature strip. No nature strip. Well, um, no That's not paper that. No, it's not an arrow street. It's not an arrow street. By the way, I did it. I'm inclined to say no rather than yes, but I'm conscious of Yeah, no, I look, absolutely. But um, as I said, I think we were just responding to in relation to the parking strategy and improving line marking. Nothing to do with um, obviously widening uh, the road or return it back to normal because, again, I'm going to take it as a complaint that you might act upon the way you're sure. interpreting it, but they're specifically asked to widen Myrtle Street. Are we in favour of that or not? No. 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 Um, small doggy park. Oh, little. 
Is that a small park or for small dogs? Small dogs. Mate. I think oh, it's a small park for small dogs. <laughs> They can't be through the game. Any more questions? <laughs> no, that's a oh, that's a serious question. So if it's only oh, small dogs, how do you kick the big dogs out? How do you police that? I think they're just saying it's a small park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, Bradford, the comment here says Bradford Reserve is too small. Um, again. We need some criteria. What's what's the square meterage of it, and what's the one in Broadview? But I'm oh, making decisions really quickly on stuff we don't have the information for. I know that's that's what we're faced with. So, all right, I'll look up. This, this should be about. I'm in favour of dog parks where the community want them. Be about ten percent the size of the one. In Broadview. Aren't we looking at this as sort of part of our open space? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, so I think maybe we're doubling up. Yeah. The trouble is we'd be locked into calling it for a small doggy park mm. instead of what we would like is to have the money rather than improve it. Well, well maybe not. There, there are no fenced parks in that area. It is useless as it currently stands. See the picture? Uh, there are roads on three sides of that little strip of land and there's a seat. Well, I've seen since for the last 14 years. Um, and you wouldn't let your kids out because it's no fence, but they're so close to a road. So I'm kind of thinking yes, but anyway. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. I think it's. I mean, could you, could you do a pilot project? Are you allowed to put sort of. Pilots in there? Yes. No, pilot, as in a pilot project. Small <laughs> pilot pirates, couldn't you? Uh, anyway. So is, is the money. Basically, just go to fencing. Oh, 50,000, maybe not. That's 50 grand's worth of fencing. Well, I know, it's a 10 year old park, which is ripping the grass out and putting yeah, it Yeah, that's mm. true. It's they don't have to be, though, do they? Really? Bark oh, chips. Well, it's a nice green space, regardless. Yeah. It has an environmental use at the moment, and we want to do something more to make it more interesting. Oh, there are lots of things you could most probably do at a small cost, but this is not, this is our problem, this is not saying those sorts of things. No, it's not, this is just asking, could we turn it into a dog park? No. We turn it into a fenced park though, would that be? Is that what we ask for? The, okay, we have 30 seconds before we run out of suspended meeting proceedings. We are one third of the way through. Should we take another 15 minutes to see how far we go? Okay, uh, need approval to suspend any procedures until 8.45. Done, let's keep going. Um, Morton Street Playground Upgrade, and that currently says a yes, recommended, <coughs> noting that there's ongoing costs. I, I think this is the, really the one where we need to know how much the applicant has asked for. There was two, as far as I know, there were two residents that actually put in the same application. I was unaware of it when the other resident pulled out with gastro like at the last minute and had done a fair bit of work. And I knew how much she was asking for, but I don't know how much. Uh, I think it was only like 50 grand or something like that. But it wasn't a grandiose thing. It was only just to replace, it was just to replace the actual equipment that was there. It, was, it wasn't. I, I think where it says stimulating playground for kids, I mean, I'm going to suggest that our staff and all the experts on that than an applicant and, and that replacing oh peeling paint on swings for swings without peeling paint ain't gonna cut it for that one. No. And she didn't put her she didn't put hers in. It'd be really nice to see how much the other applicant put in. It doesn't actually matter how much they ask. We're recommending how much we yeah, that's what we get from. Yeah, no, and I agree. I think it needs to be done. If we could get any money we're probably gonna do this one anyway, aren't we? Stuff or anything that would say yes, but I think it's 200 grand. All right, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Why are we asking more? I don't, can you ask for more? Yeah. With the bill and vote for it. Then. Online. <laughs> I'm really be careful. You know, that little rock and all thing, 35 years ago, I tried to cut it and take it home. I could have it now to take home after this. <laughs> 35 years ago, now? that same equipment was there. That's what I'm getting at, really. Okay. And you give me to take it home. 
I was tempted. But to, to I hear it. <coughs> yeah, it's a long time ago. I can't be jailed. But picnic table sunshade. Yep, uh, that needs to be amended to thirty-five thousand because that's what I put in my submission. Five thousand. Okay, so that's a substantial sunshade. Well, I didn't want to under I didn't want to under submit in case we came up short. All right, prospect nesting boxes. Yes. Yes. Pigeon boxes. Yes. yes. Yeah. No one's unhappy. Yeah. Uh, big dog parks, local fence dog parks for. I'm sorry, three-legged dogs in Marco at several locations. Yes. Sam Watson or Cotton Street. So they haven't been definitive. Is that what I'm? Trying to read, trying to lie to you. What, what's the application, sir? Yeah, what it says here. Well, we're already going to be looking at the Street. Earned sconce for surrounding parks in Helens Park, Foster Primary. So this is a generic application for dog parks. Dog parks. Yes. Is so that likely? To get, the question is: Is that likely to get up? Are they are they likely to approve something somewhere? Application probably not. We can actually include our comments again in that spreadsheet that are referencing support dog parks because we don't have any dog parks, and the recommendation would be at this location. We would actually put that description in there. Okay. We, still, we still define where we put Right, so the applicant doesn't care where it is, we just end up so defining where would we recommend? Okay. Uh, well, I'd be suggesting that some have already said either at Stan Watson or at the end of Cotton Street. So you can make that. You can, I think my reading of the spreadsheet is if, if it's successful, then we would be putting a recommendation to you that says this is for part. Yeah. I think yes. Yes. I think yes. Cotton Street is a strange place to put This is the end of people's lives, not in the middle of it. I don't think it's I know we've got a bit of dirt there, but I don't want to do it with it. Cross Torrens Road to take a dog there. I'm not sure. Well, we don't care about the others. I don't care. Stan Watson, where? Stan Watson is on. Um, yeah. Stan Watson is on Cotton Street. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, we discussed it in Scots, is that, is that the start of that possible? Because we've just done things there, haven't we? In Scots, no, I don't think that was considered. Sorry? Okay, okay, so we've, we've got a couple of options there to start recommending Stan Watson or Cotton Street that we have with either. Or yeah. 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 Stan Watson would be good. Yeah, I think Stan Watson would be good. They could drown. No, no, no. We'll put that in. So that's a, that's a yes, not a no. <laughs> and the last one, Broadview Community Hub. Oh, well, I stopped at 65,000. Well, that's why my question exactly was what. Is that going to get you a lot of money? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 200. I would have a question about is it missing a T or a comma? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you're talking about, you read the description, uh, poorly, currently poor acoustics and heavy furniture to two community groups and public using fantastic facilities. <coughs> I will do data concert tenant doors and dated thread worn carpet, um, bio acoustic separation between two spaces, operable doors, carpet tiles, etc. This okay. So this is actually Broadview Club Club Rooms, is that correct? Yeah. Because the board directors at the Club. That's near where the little stage is, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. So they've gone and costed this up. Is that, is that what I'm saying here? It appears to be. It appears to be where they've itemised. Well, that's their cost. They're picking up and... I am concerned, though, just say, however, uh, council has no capacity to co fund, however, could offer some support if the club was successful. So, what do they mean? Are they expecting us to co fund it? 
Yeah. Well, they, they can put in for a community grant application like anybody else, which is fine. A lot of fun. Oh, but they're only putting in fifty-five thousand dollars because they they think that we might be able to do that. Which is that, however, put off some support. If it's, so I'm just asked, wondering if that's financial support. Oh, so that, that's a okay, so that's a staff comment. That's not a yeah. club comment. That was just a staff comment that I put on there, but, um, mainly for right. advice. Like, okay. Uh, Advice, yeah, it's not part of the application, no. so we can ignore that for the purposes of assessing application. Yeah, yeah. yeah happy with that. Yeah. We're generally happy with that one. Yeah. All right, so in summary, Dennis uh, Baker, CEO, elected members, before I take us back in the session, we have agreed with the staff recommendation of St. Helens Park Fence. East, but we have changed it on purpose to no. We have agreed with the staff on the Dalton Park and the Mawson Street Playground upgrade and the picnic table sunshade and the prospect next missing boxes. Notice we've changed the amount of the picnic table sunshade to 35000 And we have not agreed with the staff on the prospect dog park, so we've changed that to a yes. Uh, and we have agreed on a broad view community hub club, 65,000. That is, other people have it recorded. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good. CEO, I'll do that. Yes. And, the, and, the, and the noting that the CEO will put in our responses subject to these amounts being the amounts. And if there's a big discrepancy, CEO, I'll take it, we'll call the applicant and help them understand what they're talking about. Yeah, I don't think that's inappropriate to call them, is it? Okay. All right, so we'll leave it in the staff's hands. If you need us, we'll come back to a special sure. council meeting if you at all need to. People are comfortable with that? Yes. All right, I'm going to call us back into session and ask that to be moved. But before I do that, uh, what are we going to move to do a change the recommendation? <laughs> List with the list with the ones with the following ones in the walks and just list the top. Uh, that would be that, no. I'd rather I'd rather we list all of them so there's a clear decision. Yes or no. We can just hold on with an impact excerpt, support, not supported. Or, 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 or we can we can endorse this except saying as amended for Myrtle Street, which the council does not support, and the Prospect Dog Park, which council does support. Yep. And that becomes hang on, what's been? Uh, this is just McClaver. Sorry, members, it's because it's a bit rushed. I'm going to call the brief agenda for five minutes, while the staff type up all of them with the amounts and our recommendation. Just to be clear to not just us, but to the members of the public who put it. I request it, I think it's really important for them. Thank you, five minutes. We've added it to the Interesting place. You know my name? Yeah. Is it all? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting to see like, non progressive and they're like English and everyone's going to vote for one project. So we're going to make it. What will happen is exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Before you know it, then everything because everyone's Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jimmy Lang Road, and Patrick, and this is right here, and back on the Port Road, and then get to the end, and continue around past the past week, and that's it. And when you see it, it's going to be a little bit of 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 a that's so people can remember the heritage of all those families. And the students from your generation yeah, yeah, yeah. It was beautiful old It was demolished. Demolished. The condition of being demolished. The new building will reflect exactly what it looked like. And the only reason I know that is because I can remember the other building. Otherwise, you'd never know that building. Is anything like what you see before? You know, and so then they just come to the point where you've got to change it. So you lose a lot of it. And you can use that for a small amount of it. And not a raise, I use mobilised days or Chinese and Chinese. Some of these ones they got a friend of mine is yes. Yes. Steve is that really But then you can line up and all the and you can get knocked down and make it right. up the rocks. And you can get knocked down the rocks. Yeah, 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 I don't 
So we've got up on the screen, just trying to capture all this uh, again, just for the purposes of transparency. Uh, we have part one that we considered the program and also provide a response to the state government that one council group <coughs> following projects subject to the allocated amounts being applied to each project and they are five for supporting this nominated next to them. Um, and then part two, we're not willing to support the following projects as currently nominated by the community uh, and there are those four. I'm just trying to get the words as currently nominated just to sort of, so not throwing them out entirely, but as they put to us, we're not in the, in the mood to support them. I think some of those who might be stronger, but say for instance they came back with a Irish Heart Park East proposal that fitted our strategy, we may well be of a mind to support them, but not as it's currently on there. So I didn't want to just say it out one night. Um, it's like part three, so that's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. All right, James, yeah, okay. So, a little suggestion there from Christina, thank you. Yeah, just the same part, same part. Yep. Yeah. Right, so, yeah, yeah okay. Yes, right, please. so the people happy with that reflective conversation we had? All right, somebody happy to move that way? Actually, no, I'm not sure I will. I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> someone happy to move that way? Oh, yeah. Can you just speak to it? Um, I, you know, I think we've uh, given it a reasonable um, uh, <clears throat> time to discuss it uh, and the rest of it. It's just uh, unfortunate part of this process that we could have had more time and more time with our <clears throat> community mm. who uh, obviously, you know, got some ideas. So. Just a bit of a shame about the way the um, <coughs> the whole pro uh, funding is set up in my um, um, belief. <coughs> yes, thank you. Do I have a second? That's what I would. There's a bit of curious there's a bit of a disconnect between um, state government and local government in trying to implement something like this. Um, we might find ourselves at tail end and a bit of trouble down the track if things get up that possible and that's been discussed earlier on today but in general it's good to see a good number of projects in a diverse range of projects and uh, hopefully we can get behind uh, some of these projects and get some success happening. Okay, thank you. Any further debate? Councillor Bay. Um, yeah, it was a query a little bit more. So I just wonder how that impacts on our sort of com community engagement policy. So if people are known to us, they are they allowed to be residents or not residents who are voting on these things? And can they vote positive and negative? So can they have negative, uh, don't vote for that? Vote against. Because you, you can have something that's polarised. So you can have a lot of people want it, but a lot of residents might say, well, that's going to create a lot of traffic, so we don't want it. it I, I don't really know what that process looks like. And Is that a question or a comment? Um, both. <laughs> so I guess one, I'll clarify. So one, how does this impact on our community engagement charter of policy? Because obviously if we're normally doing those kind of things, we would discuss with the residents in the local area and our community it kind of, it's bypassed that and, yeah. Thank you. Through, through the chair, I think right, it has essentially bypassed the opportunity at this point to have that feedback completed um, without knowing the process after funding is endorsed. Um, it would be hard for me to say whether or not there's an opportunity at that stage. I would think that there is. Um, just because the money exists doesn't necessarily then mean that the rollout commences. Um, so there will be some form of consultation that's appropriate for the right. style um, of the projects here to live with. Yeah. For example, the Merchant Street one, if that was to get up, um, would just be widening the street without having the relevant. And I, guess, uh, and I guess the second part of the question that I'd like to come back to elected members is with that online polling thing, if, if there is something that's polarised people, so it's very topical, you could actually have 
positive and negative. I don't know how that works, is it? Oh, like, yeah, but, um, chair, we haven't seen it, but I predict there may be a thumbs up, thumbs down, or a star rating or an out of ten. Right. That then come back to us. Okay. This was the feedback. So it'd be nice to get that detail. See so, ya. Yeah. Um, I actually participated in one of these up in the regions that has been done um, before, and essentially you click on the project and you just click on the project to indicate the work for it. And no then, way that uh, shows it. So you might actually click on five projects or ten projects uh, and then leave the website. You now you could go back into the website as many times as you wanted to, uh, but essentially that's how it was just click on the particular project. It wasn't a yes, no, or you just <laughs> hit, the, hit the project and that's it. That, that is a counter. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to support it because even if we get three and thruppence, we got more than we started with. But I just, in my mind, just taken on working with this piece of paper here, roughly the ongoing cost, which doesn't fit into that, is about 23500 per <coughs> to, to, for us to keep these going. But keep in mind that it'll still be good somewhere to put the little, the little dogs um, and the various other things, so I'm going to support it. Thank you. Give me a good. Uh, just a very briefly mention, I have a very good authority that it will definitely not be no um, Just be a, if you like it, button or a, like a function. But I think irrespective of what the process looks like, we can't control that, which we try to. It's just work within the parameters we've got. Thank you. Further speakers? Um, just briefly from the Chair, I'm going to support that because that's a discussion we've had. I, I, I really support this generation of ideas from the community, <coughs> which is something we should look at ourselves somehow, but obviously <laughs> we will need to learn from this process and not repeat these mistakes if we set something up. Um, and second second point is the I, I think we should keep an eye on this process and if it looks like it's been successful, or whatever, whatever happens, that we learn from it and better prepare for the next round, because there are two rounds. So see, uh, if you put <coughs> for us, perhaps we have on our website a list of our own budget bids that didn't get up, or a list of our park strategy or other items or dog park locations that we haven't yet funded, that people could kind of pick and pack from with amounts and whatever, that would be helpful. So I think people have really pulled these things from wherever. And I kind of like that, but we haven't put up any framework to help them, and I think we could. Um, so I um, just encourage all of us to keep an eye on the process, and obviously vote to get as much of these funds into our city as we, as we can. Um, okay, any further debate? Councillor Stan. Um, yeah, I, the other thing that I think um, is missing out of this whole um, process is a wonderful little piece of um, IT infrastructure that the state government has set up, this whole um, the whole device of being able to put your information into into a page and then put it on a map and then click on a map and have something come up. I I would love after this whole process is, is finished, I'd love to know who owns the IP and whether rather we build anything ourselves for can we just grab it? Because it's a it's a very, very slick piece of work. Councillor Harris, stop, 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 Thank you, Councillor Lee, for the information. Uh, much obliged. Okay. Much obliged, <laughs> Councillor Lee. We'll do a bit without drama. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, back to you, Councillor Barnett. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I just uh, concur with the Mayor's comments, and um, this is just an example of having this wonderful piece of information that's just sort of dropped, okay. dropped, dropped, dropped upon us. Mm. Um, this is our whole frustration, I think, this whole process, and I do hope that uh, our council and other councils are going to provide feedback to the state government. You know, we love having the money out there, we love, we love having it in our community, we love the 
idea of um, uh, you know being uh, participating in democracy, but it really does need to be thought through and improved. Thank you. So that concludes the debate. All those in favour? Yes. Carried unanimously. All right. Next item withdrawn was the development and public realm compliance options by Councillor Harris. I need to give a brief reason under our interpretation of the rules, but if you wish to, page 23. Well, I, I am I am going to move it, but I'd like to make a few comments about it and uh, etc. Okay, so we can say moving. All right. Um, the, the, the couple of things about it, but firstly, in my, my belief, it, it doesn't go quite far enough just yet. And uh, but I really thank the staff that have put these ideas together and, and, and the process because I think it's very good. And I don't think I've got questions because I believe we're we're looking in this in that sort of second one, not you know the one that's targeted that that sort of one. Um, so look the I'll pick the one bad comment and go from there. It's, I've heard this, not from this council, but from a lot of other places, and you might have it in front, I don't think it matters. Um, by doing these extra things and, and extra safety precautions and extra policing and, and guarding things to look after people, we may discourage, discourage investment and development within the city in connection to this sort of plan and, and to our our objectives and that and I've actually heard that most of my working life and some that know with my oh do you want to know where that bit is? Yeah, please, yeah. Uh, page 30 second paragraph it's there's 6.6 .6 underneath so it must be 6.5 thank you there you got it I hope this doesn't come off me minutes. Oh, there, now I can see it. It's in green. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, one, one of the biggest fights that happened at one stage is with the HIA about protection on roofs for tilers and that with handrails or with uh, pool protection around the side. That was going to bring the housing industry to a standstill and people wouldn't build houses and they'll never happen again because everyone would go broke and, and you'd never make any money. And if you go around now to all the proper houses being built, you'll find these sort of things are there and life moves on. So I unfortunately don't agree with the discouraging part. I've personally been involved with 19 actual deaths on construction sites. Most of them are <coughs> by non-compliance. They're called accidents and things like that, but it's generally non-compliance. And when a person's got pressure to work there and, and circumstances, they keep going. So I think it's very important that we do that second targeted. I'd like the other one. The other things I think is very important that um, maybe we don't ever go to court, but there is those fine process we got. I couldn't notice in there, simply because I couldn't follow everything down, much about craneage and, and road blockage. I, I, I feeling it might be in some of it, but there is going to be, once you put this together and it comes back again, that gives me a bit more time to look at those sort of things. But I, I tell you, to me, it's very important, these sort of things and uh, that I've gone around and noticed, the ones that I've complained and Ginny's not here in the Cornu Street with damage to people's property and damage to our roads through the scaffolding and stuff like that. And I know our people have been there to make these people comply with what was in the DAP and situation. Devonport Terrace is one being built down there by Pym Street and I believe the council has been down there at times. There is no feeling whatsoever about community safety down there. Our property where the railway line is, and I've got pictures, but I can't show you the pictures simply because it's got individuals in and I didn't have enough time to ask them, but I will show you at some stage. But 
they store their stairwells and, and their stairs and all this stuff on our property on the side. I've been down there while they're pouring concrete. I raised it here once. Pouring concrete, they have a concrete pump that sits on the footpath and, and pumps from the road and pumps over the footpath and there was no no protection whatsoever for people. There's scissor lift and that one's lucky enough or unlucky enough, uh, I don't know if it's had any accidents, but being sort of a worse example because there is good ones around. But I believe we should be still building the buildings. I don't see any problem with that. They should happen and should go ahead and development is important to the city. But I don't want to sit here one day and, and say, oh, Billy Bunt or Mrs Smith, she, she had her legs chopped off down the road. And if anyone sits in the room, and I don't believe there is, and says, oh, that sort of thing doesn't happen, it happens. When people get killed associated with construction or any other thing, to be honest, but in my case, I know of construction. You see them and they don't know. Jimmy Till didn't know he's down in a hole in Asia project. Don't worry about on the building site, the bloke next day that had his head cut off on the motorbike. They, they were all, all things that happened on construction so I, I, I don't, so please endorse it, but keep in mind, <coughs> hopefully by the time the next one comes up, the next part of this phase, that hopefully we can do a bit more because I, I feel very good that the staff's done a pretty good effort to try and save our residents and other people around construction sites. Thank you. Well, <coughs> um, yes, um, I support it. And I think um, my first council um, for emphasising um, matter of safety. Um, uh, I'm in favour um, because it underpins principles of uh, quality, safe, and um, accessible environments. Uh, I think as long as the charges are reasonable and compensate for the inability um, uh, for our residents, our workers, visitors, whoever, uh, to use our roads, footpaths, and the inconvenience of that. As we saw, you know, coming down today, um, you know, I had to wait for at least, I think, 10 minutes. Like I didn't, wasn't in a rush, because uh, uh, our Prospect Road, one of our main thoroughfares, was only one lane um, for most of the, I don't know how long it's going to be, with the cinema building. So, um, uh, yeah, so I think if, if it's reasonable and it's, um, I mean, it's business, it's good business practice and I think that's all we're wanting uh, in return for, um, you know, doing business in, in our city. Um, so, yeah, so I think if we, you know, have that ensuring safety and compliance, um, it does on a matter just bring up to me something that um, we might like to take on board is that we've got these uh, compliance options and then um, we don't seem to, as a, uh, a council, have a complete like design strategy. They seem to be in all different policies and like our heritage design here is here. I know so I think like Saturday Hills Council and some others um, actually have more of a uh, an urban design or public realm um, strategy overall and guidelines. You know, so we get some consistency in like that uh, or uh, in heritage areas and some things like that. So just making a note um, that you, I'd be happy to see that um, eventually. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Any further speakers? Councillor Back. I'd like to move an amendment. Um, so, um, have I got five minutes if I move an amendment? Got five minutes including your amendment other than the voting bit. Okay, um, so I would actually like to um, move, uh, change it to, instead of a targeted compliance approach, that we actually move to what the word oh, is, yeah. the proactive um, compliance approach. Oh, yeah. oh. Contrary to the motion, so you have to wait for this one to be in favour of this one being lost, and if it gets lost, then you can move it on to That's my interpretation. See that? That's your interpretation. And we don't have a budget, we don't have a budget bid, so. Um, oh, okay, I can still speak. Speak to. Well, you can speak if you, if you, 
you, you can speak against this one if you don't <coughs> want to put up, or you can speak to this one and seek to find money to vote for the additional stuff. Um, but I can't take that as an amendment because that's that's it's All right. I'll, I'll, I'll speak against it. Okay. So um, look, and everything except that one word. I do support, and I'd have to commend the author of the report again. Excellent report, and um, a lot of reference back to, I guess, that conflict we've got between um, growth and compliance and staffing. And I, I think um, Councillor Harris made a really good point. As far, as far as you know, we are very proactive with development, but it doesn't mean that our community expects anything less than the safest, most compliant buildings for best practice um, out there. And um, if we don't have enough bodies out there checking, um, it's assumed that no one is. Now, I know there are acts and regulations and, and what we can do under the act and what we can't do, but i just like to see our staffing levels and our compliance checking rise because it's I guess it's a different um, service level you know we have more development therefore we should be checking more and I I don't know how that is tracked and I mean maybe it is but I guess I see the amount of development and the amount of staff we have and um, I think it's unfair actually on the current staff that we have and I don't want them to burn out either because we've got a lot of expectations on our small council and we are very progressive um, but we have to fund the strategic goals that we are aiming for. So if we're all about infill development and building a new, you know, village heart and all those great things, we have to resource it accordingly. And I think in the next 12 months we're going to have to look really hard at our needs and wants. And um, I, I know our community and communities in the in a fringe of Adelaide are all facing the same issues. And, and most people are not necessarily against development, it's it's the quality. And I think also, I think staff can be conflicted. I mean, you know, we've got compliance issues, we've got variations, and so, you know, people are in between in that, that space. And I think I just want to make sure that there's clarity about what compliance things are checked, how many visits we're doing, so people know that people are looking. And at the moment, the, the public is looking, but it's the vehicle by which they can actually complain to the state. And at the moment, for whatever reason, no one seems to be using that mechanism. I think that needs to be looked at as well for the private certifiers that's mentioned in this. Thank you. Any further speakers? Okay. You can choose to if you wish to, Councillor Evans, but take it you wish to speak. No, that's okay. Um, just to, to, to echo the thanks to staff for the report, it's very comprehensive. Um, there's a lot of information here, and if I'm honest, I'm still digesting it as well. Um, the, the, there's a whole lot of, you know, I guess, challenges, and there's a whole lot of opportunities as well. Um, in terms of the table and the costs, that's very helpful, that's very useful, mm -hmm. I think, looking at the inspections and looking at the, at the different you know, policy levers that we can pull and what our options are. Um, to do a, a full proactive approach, you know, 239 grand is, is a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. Is it warranted? Don't know. Um, so the recommendation this evening speaks to it being this targeted approach. Um, don't really know enough to, to have a view on that necessarily, but I think this report goes a long way to start uh, to provide us with some visibility and some information around what's going on, and um, and I think it's going to be a, a good piece of work moving forward. So, so, so I guess I, I wouldn't say this is the end of it, this is the beginning of it, I think it's like we're off to a really great start, and looking forward to what comes out of this compliance policy, which I guess can be tweaked or adjusted in terms of the <coughs> proactiveness of it as we move forward. Um, thank you. So I'm just trying to find my spot. I just had a very simple query. It was in relation, well, actually, first of all, let me just echo those comments, particularly around the thoroughness of the report and responding to the, the needs that were identified by elected members. Um, I, I just want to understand the, how we cut costs of $26,000. So there is a couple of options that were identified. 
by servicing of it decreases, which is really exciting. Um, internal restructuring, that kind of excites me, and additional resources being provided by budget variation. So I think, I just want to check if I'm reading it correctly. So for the pilot, it will just be within existing budget. Can I just, I just want to understand how we're doing that. It's 25,000, it's not an insignificant amount of money. Um, so I just want to understand that. Okay. Through the chair there, there is a vacancy in um, one of the portfolios of council um, that has not been filled for some time, which has created an opportunity to use some of that money um, to essentially reintroduce that officer into the mix with a different um, level of responsibility or a different focus. So the money is there. So without wanting to deal with operational issues, it's a, it's a substantive vacancy that is there. Through the chair, yes. 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 Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. I'll just speak briefly from the Chair. It's, it's clear to the staff that we're concerned about this matter. I'm grateful that they've put four motions in there, uh, one from each of the months prior to this one. I did encourage the CA to respond and provide some meaningful way forward, so we didn't get another motion this month that would make five in a row. Um, I think there's a really loud and clear message to the staff that we expect better. Uh, they put to us a proposal which works within our current budget constraints. Um, I think with that pressure we've put on them, uh, and that clear message, uh, it's incumbent upon us to follow their recommendation, at least in the short term. If we find that we're not happy with it, well, there's a budget bid process coming up uh, in March, and we can always ask for something beyond what's recommended to us tonight. Um, I, I'm hesitant to vote this down now and vote something else up, because we <coughs> haven't got that money, uh, and we haven't been advised of what that implication would be should we seek to ask for that money to be committed. So I think that would be... Uh, not the appropriate path at this point. Um, this to me seems to be a measured way of, uh, of, of um, elevating our presence in the space and not standing the issues that come for Harrison's raised, some of which relate to other authorities. Um, there's nothing wrong with us calling those authorities if we suspect there's a problem and getting them to uh, extract a uh, um, digit and get their way up to prospect rather than focusing just on the, on the square mile in Adelaide. It's being built in other places, they might be surprised tonight. Um, but we know. So I, I urge you to support what's before us tonight. Let's give this a thorough run for six months. Uh, let's see if it does have an impact out there. Uh, and by all means, please report issues that you see in your observation of the city uh, to the staff uh, so that they're aware of them as early as, as, uh, as you are and can act on them as appropriate. Thank you. Any further debate? Back to you, Captain Harris. Yes, uh, just just a couple of things. In my mind, when I was looking at the targeted and the plus twenty six and that, I was using your words, looking more at it in my head at a six month or eight month trial sort of setup. Why well, it doesn't say that in, in to see how things work and then maybe improve, maybe not to the top proactive one, but close enough because. Uh, unfortunately, the Mayor pointed out a couple of things of what we are talking about in this one is the safety of the people around the construction sites, not necessarily on them. So in here where it says about safe work and that, that's the people inside, not outside. <coughs> the other alternatives, yes, I've been through that quite well here. Here. They, they, if the people on the inside build a scaffold, that will fall on someone on the outside, they will interfere, but not with things like trucks on the road, cranes on the road, unless someone's working with them. But uh, put that to one side, the HIA, as I emphasised before, they actually have a policy that they work with a lot of other places, and, and I can't honestly say if it's written, but they have a thing around schools and playgrounds and that, that construction sites, even single housing, is fenced off. It's a policy they've got, although I don't think it's, you know, in, in any of the the rules and that. I rang our council and asked about a construction site opposite the Narsworth Primary School about hoarding, and I said I was concerned about children climbing on machinery, etc. And my reply from the department here in the city of Prospect was, I will go and ring the police and, and they'll sort that out. 
and I think a simple fence would have been a lot better and the same with the beds. So while there is possibly another one, I'm sort of happy myself to see this move ahead because I didn't mention there's a part about training in there, so people will be training. I believe if we need another person, then it has to happen um, because, um, you know, I'll give up a Wi-Fi on a corner to try and save someone's leg. So I am still supporting this, and uh, hopefully if it gets up and goes through, that we get another report later when it's all put into place. And from there, we'll have a look after a couple of months, like six or eight months, see how it's going, and then improving. But I think if you're frightened enough people to do the right thing, you might not have to get to the next one. That concludes the debate. All those in favour? Yes, it's carried down. Next item withdrawn was item 19.2, the Local Government Association. <coughs> Uh, 2017 notices of motion on page 81, um, and I've withdrawn it because I, I must have missed this meeting. But they, pardon me, I'm going to sort of stand up and put these motions and speak to them. So I want to make sure that they were uh, uh, ticketing boo and as good as we could get. Uh, otherwise, that can be embarrassing. And particularly the one, if I could address um, somebody's attention somewhere and see how this. We might be in a suspension of many, many procedures, I, I think, until uh, we're up nine forty-five. Um, no, to nine forty-five. All those in favour? Yes. Yes. Good. Uh, the top the uh, Eastern Health Authority motion. I'm not sure. I think Alice may have come on himself. Um, there is a risk if you put something up that's only about our value with the rest of the association says we've got to sort your own knitting out. I didn't mean, quite understand what we we're trying to do and why we haven't written a letter from East from EHART to whoever saying please fix this. Is this an issue that affects the whole sector? It is, and, and perhaps the wording isn't quite right, and I may not be the best person to, to address the wording, but essentially what happens in it, you know, we actually have this report given to us a couple of weeks ago at the, at the latest EHA board meeting, is that SA Health requires a whole lot of data um, on environmental health matters from local governments that deal with environmental health. We outsource ours to EHA, um, but for every council this would be an issue, and there's a lot of duplication at the administrative level, uh, level that relates to the data that they've got to compile from environmental health to give to SA Health. So it's, it's essentially SA Health having a system that's not easy to deal with in local government. Is there a better way for that information to move across? Um, it's quite a technical issue. Um, it may not be the best one to move on the form of the um, LGA AGM, and I can see that now. Um, so so it, it is one that probably could be removed. It's, it's more of a more of a process of than anything else, I guess. Has EHAR attempted to resolve this and failed? Oh, the answer is no, they get it there and do what they need to do. So, 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 so it's probably something that in retrospect can be taken offline. Oh, but I'm suggesting it's good. I'm happy to take it up. If they have tried and found a bit of brick wall, if they haven't tried yet, yeah. um, it is a very technical matter. And someone would say, well, why hasn't someone asked for this already? So, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, yeah, I'm grateful if you're not yet so keen on it. Yeah, no, that's fine. In hindsight, you're right. It doesn't really fit. Uh, sorry. May I suggest I'm not to do with EHAR, but the standardisation of information collection between state and local government, which will lead into the next point. You may think that that's a great answer, but we don't understand the question. Oh, okay. That's my problem. All right. There's public health information and which bit of information, and it is a highly technical matter. It's got to be generified. So it doesn't mention Eastern Health Authority, which case it needs a bit more guts. Or they should get on with it and find the obstacle and ask for the obstacle to be resolved by way of resolution. It's my recommendation. Yeah. And, and that's fair as well. It doesn't need to be so, so yeah. I can see that. But I do encourage you to go back to the home. So if you don't like it, what are you doing about fixing it? And if they ask you to come back with a resolution to LGA general meeting, it was maybe six months. So that could still happen. But it is going to work. So, so can I just clarify, so uh, nobody from our staff has checked with Eastern Health Authority prior 
to the meat lab just to check it all. Um, no, I certainly um, tried to um, see to try and develop up some wording. If you recall, that workshop uh, was yeah. relatively open-ended and we weren't given a lot of uh, direction, I'd have to say. We tried to actually identify how best to represent the views that were being expressed by yourselves uh, in motions that uh, could be understood uh, by the sector and that it actually fact had some foundation. So. Yeah, yeah. Because sorry, I don't. I think that um, uh, hasn't been uh, flagged um, by the health authority that um, uh, you know that this is what we intend to do. Where we should sh certainly shouldn't be having there. Yeah. As soon as you mention the Eastern health authority, and that will you know, and if, yeah. So I wouldn't be happy having that in unless we've um, okayed it with Eastern Health Authority and you have a thorough understanding uh, of the issue. Yeah, I, I, I agree. This is all on that page, item four, um, I, I think it's a good motion and intent, it's just some of the language, so, so, because this is going to go up in front of the great family of elected members uh, who needs to be able to read it and understand it and have to make sure their own councils and stuff. So, so shared use in the consumer Format. <coughs> are there some alternate words to achieve what, what somebody wanted to achieve? Just concerned about it. Put them off as geek speaking. What, what are we trying to do? But basically, what it is, it's common yeah. fields. So, for example, the FA Grants Commission has comparable data <laughs> um, that is not easily accessible. You have to scrape it, which is geek terminology, off a PDF. So the way that the SA government is going with their data.sa.gov.au is that a lot of the data sets are a bit like an Excel spreadsheet. You just take them down and you can play with them and do graphs and all the rest of it. Whereas the local government data, they all have the same fields, which is the fields for the Grants Commission, is, is harder to obtain. And my sentiment would be there would be reluctance because I know there's disclaimer, there's all the PDFs that don't read it out of context and this doesn't really mean that. But I think that's the same across all of government and I think it would really assist government if we could all kind of be looking at the same data and even for elected members, we quite often don't see that data. So um, I'm more like what the ABS have been doing. Yeah, it's, it's basically it's just... You know, the public to use. Think, I mean, that we're already doing it anyway, and I will talk specifically to the SA Grants Commission data sets because they're common fields, which means that the sheet that Marion fills in is exactly the same as the sheet that Prospect fills in, which is exactly the same as the sheet that Charles Sturt fills in. Now, I can imagine some people say, oh, that's our data. It's actually the people's data, and it's already available. It's just putting up there for people to use, like elected members to make informed you know And if you want to come and make a speech council, I'll be very obliged. Uh, <laughs> uh, I guarantee you that will be, be a struggle. Um, so a couple of things. I've been assured by the Commission that they put out the data on Excel spreadsheets, as I've advised you, and I've just asked them that they get them in Excel spreadsheets. They get them, but not the public. Well, council is public. Staff is public. You just have to... Yeah, so uh, freedom... Yeah, okay. Right. So first, first thing is that... We'll raise that. The Commission's going to get really kind of grumpy and say, well, we told you, Captain Mary Lockham, that we already do this. And why don't you just follow through what we told you to do? So I don't want to do that because I don't want to be told So, I mean, I've, I've, I've asked um, for those Excel spreadsheets, and I'm in possession of them, but for the general public, but I guess this is for the benefit of the local government association, not the general public. I don't you know. You just proved that straightening <laughs> up the yes is not correct. Um, so, which, so we've got to be careful with this stuff, right? So what I said is the last five words are geek speak. Okay. Is there a better way to put the last five words? So establishing common open data sets, probably get away with that, uh, um, uh, to facilitate uh, uh, easier sharing of information <laughs> and comparison of uh, information across councils. Cross compatible formats, does that yeah. sounds good to me as well? That's what it is. I invite some of you to come to a general meeting. 
Or is it widely usable? Usable. User friend. User friendly. Easily accessible. I just get black squares. You have some common open data sets to. Did you catch any of that? For public use. For public use. User friendly format. Before we argue about fifteen different ways to do it. Trying to find the first one. Okay. Item two. Item two. While we're getting that up. Uh, the LGA have done some work on the the lack of uh, utilities repairing roads and back. What day is this? Cut off the information seriously. Just truncated an information. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, no, no. That's about the government activity. So there hasn't been one recently about item two, so that should be fine. Um, I'm sorry. Go back to item four. Comparison. I don't know. Could you just stop at information? That's really what you want to do. Just I mean, establish easier sharing information. What's um, annoying is that our yeah. rates of tax are yeah, paying for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who gets to actually use it and mm. have access to it? Uh, I think give it a full stop. I think I think comparison is important to the argument. I think that's the intention of the motion vision, wasn't yeah. it? The comparison. I don't know what it um, and then, uh, I keep saying the information is available. If the grants commission put it to the council's in Excel format, you may well want to ask, as elected members everywhere can, why their CEOs don't do comparative analysis. I think it's a very good question. You may want to ask this CEO because he has all the data. Why she's not presenting as comparative analysis, but the same is not provided. Okay. Is incorrect. So, so I want to know where to look for it at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, I've <laughs> just found that out. List, list it on. List it on. I asked the question. I was told the CEO has been getting it for years. Okay, list it on datasa.gov.au. That would be very specific. So, is this motion now? Because I don't know since came from myself. Mm, well, not those exact words, no, but no. yeah. Does that still achieve your objective? Strengthen. I, look, I, I would actually say um, publish the SA Grants Commission reports on um, datasa.gov.au. Does the LGA come? I haven't asked that. Well, if, if, if a councillor was to choose to <coughs> on their own website, would that be contrary to... So if, if, if the information is available, and I put that up on my website, is it okay? So if you want to know about all the different councils, I've got it. I'm sure so. I'd rather they do it. Almost three different to me, there's almost a little bit of a cross. I'm, I'm trying to work out what the real purpose is here. So there's three things: is um, trying to get people to collect um, information in a common format. That's that's one thing that you're asking for here. The second thing is um, making it easy to find, and the third thing is um, presenting it in a format which is user friendly, which people can actually do something. So I like that. I like that. Well, you're right. That's good. Well, I'm just trying to work. There's a lot of things that you're asking there. So is it is it all those things or is it one of them? That sounds beautiful. We'll have the three things yep. spelled out. That would be far easier for me to try and propose because I understand. Mm. Like that. That's great. I can't remember what I just said. Don't ask me. It's recorded. Three, oh, three bullet, bullet, bullet points. Okay. <laughs> Okay, just while they're dealing with item four, um, item two, to finish item three, our item one, if we just make sure we're happy with the wording on item one because I know this is an issue that the staff have raised. <coughs> I understand this has arisen because the courts are agreeing for libraries to be places for exchange of kids to happen. 
we don't ask for that. We don't supervise visits. And supervise visits are certain hours. And they're not asking us that permission, so we just have to cop it. Um, but the staff don't get a briefing, they don't know what's going on, and it's a bit of a risk. So I understand the intent, but to me, it seems sensible. So we asked him that we're told about it or asked about it. This is about the parity. He talks about a guideline for discussion, negotiation and agreement. Um, who with uh, through the Attorney General, so possibly with district courts or family courts. Because in reality, we may not get that agreement uh, if the LGA was to, to go to that. We may not get to the agreement, but at least uh, notification and awareness um, would be a considerable step in the right direction, given that specific facilities such as City or Prospect Library is listed in all agreements without our knowledge or has been. Okay, so just back to item four in our remaining few minutes. Is this okay? Might need a bit more polishing, but can we just have a look at this, Matt and Allison? Can you just check whether this reflects the words? You get a different way of expressing common open data sets. So I can't remember what it was. Really, I think it was more about common formats. Yeah. Uh, so it was in common formats for collecting data, right? That's yeah, it. sounds good. So we're probably collecting similar stuff, but it might be, it might, the fields might be common. <laughs> so it's kind of common formats are standardising. Promoting the share of information. User-friendly. So I mean, it's kind of publicly available, but... Is it? Um, sure. It's more about accessibility. Accessibility. Mm. It's publicly accessible. <coughs> it's easily accessible. Mm. Um, remind the sharing of uh, this of such data rather than the information. Well, otherwise it sounds like a different topic. Well, is that for collecting information? I get that the sharing of such data is, is kind of saying I think the LGA encourages its members to make the information available. Well, some of, the, some of them yeah. do, but again, we, we should be not having to ask. Not having to ask, yeah, exactly. Am well, I going to get this right? So, some bureaus here, what, what are we doing? Collecting data, promoting, um, promoting yeah. the sharing of such data. I even go as far as to the, the LGA to consolidate and publish the data. But maybe that's not their role. Well, we're just getting them to seek interest. Seek though. interest, yeah. So, uh, and the second point, the second bullet point could be that the that the LGA collates and shares. Yeah. People are starting to use the term curates. Mm. Good on them, not us. Uh, collates and, and shares. Um, <laughs> Oh, I still think such data because it links back to the previous one. Yeah, that's fine. And then the third one is about <coughs> that uh, the, L the LGA. Um, Could it be ensuring data is publicly uh, is available in a data friendly format? Well, the star oh, sorry, a uh, user, user, user user friendly ensuring format. Ensuring the data is available in user friendly format, so it's got to be commonly 
you know, commonly used things such as CSV files as projects that can't be, you know, tech files that are impossible to interpret over yeah. the specific skills to go there and understand what they can talk about. Because ultimately, so it's it's so ultimately it could be a real cost saving because what happens is you end up paying a consultant who knows how to scrape a PDF file to present you a report and he or she'll do the exact same thing at the next council. So we, with all those things we're saying that the LGA now is going to do, uh, do we want them still to seek interest from the local government sector? Aren't yeah, we asking yeah, yeah, them yeah. to yeah. investigate? Yeah. Otherwise it's a drop in decision. Yeah, to investigate. Um, David, I like, I like Matt's word, instead of collating, he had a word, the curating. Because curating tends to... Can I just, can I just say any gig speaker is just going to lose it? Yeah. So, so, curating is about art. It's not art. Curating is about protecting the state. Okay. Collecting is just collecting data. Yeah. We're trying to go the pointy end here. Just keep it really plain language and don't lose people. Managing? No, that's, no, I don't think managing will work because then that means that, well, not just that, but the LGA then is, is <coughs> responsibility for the data. I think, I think it should stay with the councils, but the LGA can pull together. Is that not enough? I think that I think that works for me. I can explain that. I think people will read that and understand that. Grateful for those who participated. Can we delete item three until further notice? And sorry, just on item one, I just asked to start to check with the, the, the it still seemed a little obscure to me. So we've got any better words for the second sentence. No. Uh, yes, we do. Um, we're thinking that it could be amended, the second sentence of top point one, to read the guideline should include the requirement for notification to council through discussion between boards or court officers and the appropriate delegated officer managing that facility. So we just get, essentially gets rid of the words prior discussion with the Yeah, I think it up. Okay. Were there any other things given that we've got this open? No, good. Right. Sort of thing. And then we'll go back in the session and ask someone to move that these are the things that the staff will advise the LGA we should move in the next year meeting, which is in November. November. Yeah. A few matters ahead of us, I'm afraid. Let the members. Okay. We've been a long one for a while, have we? <laughs> okay, so we have a revised wording in uh, item one. Uh, the guidelines should include the requirement for notification to council for discussion between courts and court officers and an appropriate delegated officer managing that facility. Managing that facility. <coughs> managing that, that council facility. And the first hit the other day off, so at the end of it. Okay. Right. Back in the session. Uh, who was just to move that one? Give him a group. You should speak to them. Do not. Do have a second? Councillor Lee, you wish to speak to them? Yeah, thank you. There being none, all those in favour. Yes? Carry it. Okay. Carry it down. Good. Uh, got all that? Good. The um, next one was withdrawal 9.3, the draft leasing licensing policy for community consultation. Sorry, I should have withdrawn this because I'm hoping there's a correction to the CEO, but uh, Councillor Bacchett did for it. 
you wish to move it or you had a question or um well question i think it's it's quite a wordy policy and i'm just wondering if there's a explanatory fact sheet or a method of simplification coming for us well i was trying to work work through it um so the draft leasing and <coughs> So I guess the main thing about um, the policy is it being user-friendly and I guess a lot of it's to do with the, um, you know, terms and conditions and I get that, but okay, is, so is there an accompanying fact sheet for our community is what I'm saying. Question. Um, CEO, what will go to consultation? Is there yeah. a... We can develop a explanatory fact sheet uh, which may um, definitely ask a question sort of approach to it. Uh, so we can certainly have a, have a look at that as part of the community consultation, so we put that out. Um, it, do, it is somewhat prescriptive because it does establish the policy under which we will lease and or license our premises, um, but I think that's a good suggestion. Okay, thank you. And just a question from myself earlier today. The I'm not sure how it's expressed, the base lease figure. Um, I questioned the formula for that on page 98 and asked the CEO to check or revise or do something with that. So do we have an update on that? Hey, is it referred to? Yeah, that should be a correction. It's actually $700 a square metre, not um, per annum base. Yes. That was my fear. So if someone's leasing 100 square metres, that's seventy thousand dollars a year. That's the RSL club. What? Or approve anything anywhere near that. So I didn't understand how it didn't buy it. So can someone please clarify the relevance of that page, that schedule, the right base rates. Yeah. Lease or it's not for profit. <laughs> Uh, well, we do need to establish our policy so that we can get on and do the review of leases and licences. Uh, but given the concern being expressed there, which I fully support that concern, if we actually defer it and not. <coughs> Yeah. Questions about that, mm -hmm. and maybe that, that frequently asked questions in the actual consultation process could come back with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think generally we consult the existing uh, lessees, mm -hmm. but this should be a broad consultation process. So tell us a bit about that. Okay, thank you. Um, next item with Jorms is 19.6, the Civic Centre and Depot Transitional Arrangements. Uh, Councillor DeBacca, did you have a brief question on that? Do you wish to move it? It was just a brief question. I noticed with the split that they were looking at between the Irish Heart Room and the um, library, um, the CEO, you're being based at the library? Um, yeah. so the mayor, um, this report suggested that would be the most appropriate location to... Yeah, which is fine. I just, I, I guess because of the buildings going on here and... No, that's, sorry. that's a brief question. Okay. Um, did you have any other brief questions or you wish to move it? If you move it, you get five minutes to say whatever you want to say. That was the only one. Okay, so anybody else wish to move it? If you need a group, wish to speak to it? Um, no. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Evans, could you speak to it? Any further debate? All those in favour? Against? It's carried unanimously. The 19.9, uh, the discretionary rate rebate, number 236. Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor I hope you down here withdrawing that. You certainly did. Uh, happy to move and just ask questions as we go along. Yep. In the interest of time. Excellent. Um, so, look, I was just interested uh, at. Sorry, just so, so we had already, I understand we've already approved some discretionary rebates in the past. That's correct. 
Sorry, I'm just trying to get my... Oh, 19.9 is the one on yes. the marketing yes. no. contribution. No, it's the Sea Scouts and... Oh, sorry, yes, sorry. Yes. 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 Sea Scouts. Yeah. Yes. 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 We have, they have had a rebate for some time. So, so I think the question I asked last time we talked about this was who else out there is eligible for rebate? Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious to know that. Um, not necessarily the names of the people, but are there any others? Like, I just don't want every month for us to come. There's another two that's come out of the works. I'm just curious to know how, what we're doing to try and talk to people who might be eligible and how we might deal with that. Yeah. Through you, Mayor, we, we wrote to all recipients of discretionary rebates back in January. Um, when we presented the report to you in June, we'd only heard from those two um, applicants, and this is a subsequent two. My understanding is that we're following one more. Um, in so we to next Potentially. Uh, these two obviously came out of the woodwork when they got their rate notice. So I'm not used to seeing those, um, and so I contacted us at that point. Um, we have said, I've heard from that before. Thank you. That's all I have. Excellent. And you've you moved it? I have moved it. Uh, and do I have a second it? That's the lead. We should speak to it. Any further debate? All those in favour? Yes, it's carried unanimously. Uh, next one was um, the late item. Second. No, Charles no, Street. Sorry, 1910. Sorry, Deputy Mayor Groot. Who was again? That's fine. Again, um, I won't move. I wish to vote against it. Okay, 252. Okay, so it's out. <coughs> we wish to move it in its current form. Where are we going? What page would that be? 252. Oh, I'd move it, but I can't. Okay. The soggy one next to the. Oh. The soggy one. <laughs> <laughs> We wouldn't rent it because I've insisted on this report coming to us to get on with the job because I'm worried that if we rent it for 12 months, it'll take us three months to fix it, a month to find a tenant, and then 12 month lease is the normal lease. That's four, 16 months and winter's coming. And we bought it to fix a flooding problem. So I think we should get on with fixing the flooding problem. Yeah. Quite frankly, that's why I've asked for support to come. I have to say that the CEO's original recommendation was to rent it. I just strongly disagree with that. Um, we don't buy houses to rent them. We didn't buy this one to rent them. Well, poor houses to rent them out to people. I mean, it's not, you know, because it floods. Why would you put So I know, was there another question from Councillor Lee? No, I was just going to say that I don't want to speak to it. I just want to move it and like you, I just want to get on with it. Okay, Council Lee, we have a seconder. Council DeBacker, just speak to it. Uh, Councillor Groot. Yeah, thank you. Look, um, I just like to review, and it goes back to the discussion we had uh, when we approved the purchase. We, there was some, I'll probably record my comments, there was some more discussion about what happens in the interim period between when we purchase the property and when we demolish it for the purposes in which we bought it. Um, now, in the report, and again, I'm just trying to find my notes. Uh, in the report, I understood that we weren't actually going to be demolishing for some time, that we're not getting on with the job. And I understood the property was actually renovated prior to being on the market. So I didn't understand the fact that we had to spend some money, I can't remember what it was now, uh, oh, yeah. $5,000 to pay for leasing. I don't understand what those costs would be. Um, the agent's fees, yep, $1,000 a year. Uh, and then charges three and a half thousand dollars per annum, some of which we would have anyway, and some that we would pass on to the tenant. I, I just can somebody maybe explain to me how quick are we going to get on with this? Because if, mm -hmm. if we don't get on with it next month, then mm -hmm. we'll vote for it and it's not down. Mm -hmm. But the proposition was we went to have a months on the order design and we're going to get everything ready. And given that we're not going to cut season, we're going to do five months, so it would give us an opportunity to really sweep it some. So can I maybe, maybe the question is, how could we end this? When, like we can demolish it straight away, but that's not dealing with the other issues. So. Yep. So yeah. Um, thank Someone. you. Um, we can um, issue a contract to demolish the property uh, quickly. That would mean that the site would then lay vacant while we do the design work for the stormwater. That's going to take a little bit more time because, of course, we need to do an engineering assessment in order to ensure that the design for the detention basin 
it's appropriate. Um, and we, we've got funds within the current budget to do that. We don't have funds in order to deliver that project. So that would need to be delivered next year uh, through a budget bid. So I can I just ask the question, yeah. question in terms of the costs? My understanding is that it's in relation to securing the property. So whilst the property has had some renovation internally, our assessment of the, um, the doors was such that we were given advice by the agent that we need to replace some of the external doors to ensure that the property was quite secure for a tenant. $5,000, they're very good doors. That's only one aspect of absolute information I've got. I'd have to check on terms of any other aspect of that. Well, I only assume if we knew that there would be some um, rebate in the cost of purchase of the property. But anyway, I'll leave that aside. Um, on page 253, it talks about, and, and I'll just reiterate what you just said. Uh, and, just again, um, Sorry, bear with me. Oh, that's right. However, it is not anticipated that both planning works will be carried out on the open current property. That means we're not going to be down, we'll have a vacant lot there until at least June 2018, subject to budget approval to actually do the work in July 2018. My view, and I'll remain unchanged on this, is I'll wait against the opportunity to that up until it announced the 30th June. So we don't have to have control of that. And we may choose to be benevolent in that, we'll be registered, or we may be doing something that's creating some community benefit as a result of that, rather than just demolishing it, having a vacant of land um, and actually not having the capacity to be able to work. If someone says to me, no, we can actually knock it down and start the works next month, then I'll go to work. Thank you. Councillor Bay. Uh, yes, I have a query about risk management. So. Um, if we have um, a tenant in there, um, so how can we manage a lease agreement that says don't worry if you flood it out? Essentially, uh, the tenant takes on the risk of uh, the property. So we could advise the tenant that the property has flooded in the past. That may limit people who may want to lease the property. Um, the only time that floodwaters entered the property was last year. So whilst there's been ponding in the street and there has been flooding at the bottom end of the street, in terms of actually entering this particular property, uh, uh, it has been minimal. Uh, so it, it is a risk that the tenant would take. <laughs> um, um, so yes, I'm just I'm pondering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Another four and a half minutes to ponder, but that's all. Yes, I yes. Um, all right. I'm, yeah, I'll just try to work out uh, what's the best thing to do. I mean, um, yeah, I think uh, I think I sort of err on the side of um, agreeing with the uh, council staff. Though I would hope that we would get more of a move on. But at least it's saying to the public, I guess, um, that we have intentions. Uh, would we be having some signage up there that it's explaining what's happening? So that we're not just demolishing <coughs> the house? <laughs> what would you write on? Uh, <laughs> a sign on the fence that we would retain fencing to the property because despite the fact that the dwelling may be demolished, we certainly wouldn't want people entering the site mm -hmm. from an injury perspective. So we can certainly put a sign on the fence that indicates that it is future open space to be established as part of school more Yes, yes. Come down to Question. Yes, Councillor Bates. I'm going to speak to the Chair. I've had a lot to do with this site. I'm the one who went down there after the flooding and spoke to all the residents. So I saw how full their backyards were of water. I saw residents had little bits of vinyl cut out, ready to prop up against their brick fence, and little bits of timber ready to go to put up against their fence. They've had a history of flooding in this area that is disgraceful, quite frankly, that we should be doing something about. I'm very grateful to people who supported purchasing this property. It has flooded. The Council of Barney Expressions are very active. How on earth are there a tenant going, tenants going to get insurance for their goods and chattels in a place where um, we would be obliged to advise the insurance company, should we be asked, uh, that it's flooded? Uh, and, and there is a potential for it to flood again. And um, I also know that uh, there is a stormwater system that runs down the street, which you'd all expect that would run down the street 
There is another supplementary stormwater system that runs under the nature strip, uh, which picks up drains in backyards uh, either side of uh, Princess Street and also into the next street behind the park. Um, those drains are small and they're designed to help water in those backyards get away. You might want to ask how on earth do we allow water to get into people's backyards, but just bear with me, it's a low-lying area. And the system was put in to alleviate that, but it, it, is, it doesn't have anywhere to go uh, if the system is blocked. So what happens is people's yards flood and the water can't escape. We need to fix that. Um, I've suggested that uh, when we demolish the house, we get an engineering calculation done on how much of a retention basin we need, and we ask the demolition process to keep going until they finish digging the pit. They don't just take away the bricks and concrete, they keep take away some dirt, so they don't leave a vacant block per se, they leave a basin. And into that basin we direct those pipes that connect people's backyards. So the very first thing we do is provide a temporary solution whilst waiting for a greater solution. And I'm really worried that if we have another flood uh, coming up, uh, that um, and I'll be down there again, uh, unable to explain why we purchased the house and we put a tenant in it who was at risk of flooding and didn't get on and fix the problem. And um, I think that's um, I think it's um, I'm not comfortable with that. So if someone wants to volunteer to come down with me. Uh, perhaps perhaps I'll work out who it is, judging where the hands go tonight. <laughs> uh, your phone numbers. Um, I think we've got to get on with it. And that's why I have uh, said to see I'm interested in a report which looks like it's doing exactly that. I, I know it doesn't take long to calculate uh, how uh, deep and large detention basins need to be. And this is part of a number of issues we need to resolve down there, part of the solution. And I think a sign is an excellent idea. This will double the size of that park. Well, I think it's a pretty exciting thing to announce. Uh, in fact, you kind of wonder why well, we haven't announced it already. But maybe that might have hurt the leasing program, should that be uh, what we decide to do. So I'm going to urge you to support this, to get on with it, uh, and to make sure that the um, demolition phase doesn't just knock over a house and lead a vacant block of chain mesh across the front, that it actually does start to create the basin and that we do get that backyard pipe system into this basin straight away uh, and uh, that way um, the pumps can handle the street water but if that fails, we know that people's yards can be organised and, and that pressure relieved from them. So it is a pretty ordinary situation down there and as I say, this is one of the things we need to do, so it will be more worth it. Um, thank you. Any further debate? Councillor Harris. Uh, i just got one quick question before I say something. So tonight we vote yes. When do we demolish it and dig this hole? Tomorrow? Um, so, yeah. um, through the chair, wouldn't would I don't mean to be. We need to yeah. establish a contract for a supplier to do that. Um, and we'll use our procurement process in regard to it. So we'll do that as quickly as we possibly can. And then it stays with the whole till next year's budget, that sort of stuff. <coughs> I just feel terrible going down to food land and saying to the people that sit out the front with their sign that said they're homeless, that we're going to pull down a home, which I'm capable of doing, if we're going to do something to it, but if we're going to sit for a longer, I find it a bit hard. So when it comes time to voting, I'm just going to find it a bit hard <coughs> to down a house, and they wouldn't lose much of it flooded because the poor buggers don't, poor people don't have much anyway. So I'm still thinking until the vote goes. Estimated when things would like to happen on the site. Yeah, <laughs> through the chair. Yeah, I think that's definitely doable, and we can get on with it quite quickly. Thank you. Any further debate? Councillor Lee, I think it's back to you to sum up. Uh, not much to sum up. I think uh, the mayor had quite a bit to say, and some very sensible things as well. Um, so, well done summing up, Mayor Lachlan, and I hope that people. Will do actually look at this in terms of a quick solution. Um, I get where we want to put the people in there, put tenants in there, maybe recoup a little bit of money back. Um, but this is about like people having to live down there long term and the quicker we get on with it, the quicker the problems solve. Okay, that concludes the debate. On both the basis All those in favour? Against? It is carried unanimously. Thank you. Appreciate it and see you either.
Yeah, Deputy Mayor's noted by Christmas. Swung my vote. I was going to say today is. <laughs> okay. Speak of all words from cancer. On it. Something like being there in the raw aftermath of an emergency to tune your senses. Okay, the next item withdrawn was the late item 1912, which is the Rose Street Public Room upgrade. Uh, Councillor Harris, you had a brief question, or you wish to move it, or um, I wanted to make some. I'll never find it by the time we go home. Um, make some comments, but I, I will actually move it as well. So I can't see it anywhere. Is that up there? I don't know if I can see. Just in. Just before you move it, uh, see, I would like to provide an update. Um, so there are uh, one person's um, criticisms of what's in the report, and we need to take it on the basis that it's there, that it's there um, perspective. What we're asking someone to move, or what the staff are recommending we move, are just these three items, not the report, but these three items. So I just wanted to check uh, Councillor Harris before you move it, that he was still comfortable to move it um, uh, on, on what you've just heard, uh, and up to you. I don't think it changes the intent of what's in the recommendation. Well, I might ask a little bit different. Can I ask two questions before I actually move it? Yes, I'll allow. Okay. You, you made the comment about he doesn't want to go more than 150. A third, I, I thought, so this is my question, that's about the project was about 300 grand. So. Yes, yeah, so if it was a third, it's a hundred. And so if he still sticks with a third and that's a hundred and fifty, that makes four hundred and fifty, doesn't it? I'll just define that. Yeah, so the, he wanted the partnering agreement to indicate a cap. So it's up to. So if we define the partnering agreement based on the grant application, which was one third funded by rates one third funded by state government and one third funded by the developer yeah. um, and our project cost is in the order of $300,000 then that would be $100,000 each. I think he will still want the funding agreement to indicate a cap to his total contribution subject to what's decided tonight. He may suggest that it's capped at $100,000 for instance. So he, he's, he wants a ceiling placed on the contribution right. that he's prepared to make in case there's any variations to the project. Do you have another question? No, because I'll, I'll just look at that then. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it and I, I'll still move it with some of the thought that I had because if we've got some prizes, because if we got some prizes and we're fairly comfortable it's within that 300 mark, I still think we're comfortable. I, I wanted to pull it out because there's a couple of parts in the report that I think it's, to me it's very important because I look at this one and the waste management one and very similar sort of ideas. And I saw the four of you walk down there to have a meeting um, and I don't remember the date unless I went to court, but I don't remember the, the specific date and that. But I remember down there and I remember the things you were going down with and then the result sort of that come back. So I, I'm very happy with what you've done going down. Um, I, I think the situation when it comes to this end of the project, of that particular project, is, is a... Uh, there's going to be a few muck-ups in it because I don't think some of it was handled very good at the beginning and I will emphasise and none of you people that are sitting in front of me I'm directing that to but I, I don't believe it's handled properly. I do know I've known Stephen since he's a boy and <coughs> I don't have any problems with them being good people. Um, they're developers so they still have those sort of things but I, I believe we should still have that contact and do things. 
So I'm going to move what's up there, feeling comfortable what you're saying, but I, I, I want to emphasise again that I think the staff that are sitting here and taking up this role now, I think it's done the correct thing. We look absolute mugs if we get half the street left and it doesn't get finished and, you know, goes beyond and there's other people. We have to, it sounds like, from you people, that we have to correct future some of these wordings so things seem to look a bit different and I believe what you're doing, we will come up with that correct answer in the long run. And uh, so I'm, I'm not, I won't say I'm happy to move it because it shouldn't happen like this, but um, I'm willing to move it and let's go ahead and finish the project in Rose Street. Thank you. Second that? Yes. Um, That's could uh, I just have a Question: I can't um, know with clarity from my memory. So, um, sorry, so how much? You are accepting the second. Uh, yes. Okay, that's fine. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so how much uh, was the grant? The the total uh, amount in council's budget is in the order of four hundred and twenty-three thousand dollars. It's um, of which uh, two hundred and eleven. 1650 was to be funded from grant. Now we defined, we didn't define grant funding in the annual business plan. The staff took grant funding as a contribution either from a property owner developer or from the state government. Um, and so when the guidelines were established uh, based on a principle of 50 50 funding, the staff made an assumption that we could seek funding externally to contribute to our portion of the 50%. I think the, the real issue has occurred in the fact that there was no formal uh, negotiation and or advice to the Maris Group in relation to the, the grant funding paperwork itself, which happened back in February, uh, and therefore it then didn't follow through in respect to how this has been handled since then. Um, so I think it is uh, very unfortunate that this has arisen um, and we certainly need to uh, review and amend our internal processes and certainly our communication strategy around seeking grant funding. So, um, uh, you know, as far as I'm in favour of moving forward, moving on, getting something done because, you know, we don't want to egg on our face, I guess, through no particular fault, I guess, really accept the process, um, but I'm just wanting um, to make sure if we have a funding one one third equal funding, um, that uh, it seems to me that we have enough room to move uh, to be able to negotiate. I just didn't want there perhaps to be um, uh, that we're going to get less because one party does not contribute what we have to one third. So, all right. Okay. So, yeah, I just think it's time. Look, you know, we've had all the explanations. That's all good. But now, I think uh, we need to move on to it. We move, need to move quickly. Um, I don't think any of us particularly want to get back a grant. Uh, so, uh, I'll be very pleased if we can get a cost of outcome and get that um, area fixed up in uh, a manner to which uh, our general public our Rose Street residents so are sort of expecting. Um, Thank you. Any further debate? I'll sort of back. Um, I just wanted to double check. Was there a loss of a car park that we had anticipated would be there? Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, the, the, the Maris Group approached us in relation to the car park immediately outside the southern retail activity um, that has been blocked off for some time now during the construction process um, and it was really on the basis that the original design which had been the subject of an early tender process by the Mars Group indicated that that was an extended footpath <coughs> and was based on that design um, and uh, in the latter iteration the, the car park was uh, reinstated through the discussion here. The, uh, the traffic management around, around the site uh, um, may be an issue in the future, but one car parking space may not actually turn the table on whether there's two <coughs> or not. 
So I, uh, he's put a fair bit of uh, emphasis on in reinstating that footpath uh, as part of our discussions with him. Okay. Again, I'd have you just commentary. Look, I'm just really disappointed with all these communication failures. And and I think it's it's not so much just the cock up, and I'll call it that. I think it's the relationships. You know, I think it's so important that we have good professional relationships with these people, and we just expect a level of professionalism internally. You know, and again, we're all human, but at the same time, I just think there's a couple of things that have happened, and and I and, and this at late notice as well yesterday was um, really disappointing. So I just wanted to share that sentiment. Oh. Uh, any further debate? No, back to uh, the mover, Councillor Harris, to your sum up. No, I've said enough thank you at this time. Includes the debate, all those in favour? Against, this carried the answer. Thank you. CEO, back to you with that uh, item. Uh, on next we have item 20, which is the council diary, as a prospect local history group event on the 5th of October, uh, and uh, um, not related at all. The following close behind is the amazing drumming monkeys performance on the 10th of October, the network prospect business event and a uh, transmitting cultural memory. Really? Right. Okay. Uh, matinee series Paul uh, Reading. And uh, the giant community garage sale coming up uh, here on the 23rd of October. Uh, so just be a bit for you and diarise. Um, general business, is there any general business? That's the standard first. Uh, yes, I'd like to <coughs> just use this uh, forum to congratulate one of our um, junior sports team on their uh, success over the weekend. Uh, the Eagles lacrosse under 13s. Girls had a fantastic match on Saturday. They were not given a chance when they went into the match. They were playing Glenelg, who hasn't lost a match in two years. I think that's correct. And so they were expect they got through to the grand final, but were expected to to do very well. They were six goals down at one stage and clawed their way up to be for it to be nine goals nine at full time. And uh, the game went into a golden goal, and they lost the golden goal. But they uh, they got the other team to they beat the other team in full time. Um, and the whole event apparently was absolutely fantastic on the day. With uh, I'll have to be corrected on this, but probably over a thousand people through the venue down at Charles Kane. So I'd like to con congratulate uh, Eagles Lacrosse on a fantastic event and success on Saturday. Terrific. Thank you very much for that. Meanwhile, I'm not trying to ignore you, but I've been looking at our rules for general business. I have no clue. I've never done it before, so. <laughs> which which uh, this item is here to enable you to raise matters of a minor nature for action by the administration or to call for reports. So you're not calling for a report? Uh, can I call for uh, uh, a... Yes, a minor action. Minor action. You just called for a letter from the mayor congratulating. Yeah, a letter from the mayor congratulating them as as he was unable to attend. Mud gate being open. I like it, Councillor Harris. Thank you. Uh, so you're calling for uh, the uh, official the, recognition of their success. To write a letter of congratulations on the success of the event at Charles Kane Reserve. Uh, run by the uh, Eagles Lacrosse Club. Yep. Okay. Well, I don't know. it's up to you to tell me what to do in that sense. Uh, yeah, that sounds fantastic, and uh, and and just recognise the, the 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 sporting success of that club as uh, one of our one of our few very successful clubs that we had this year in the city of Prospect. And uh, the date was the. They lost, but they won. Uh, the day. Third of September. Yes, twenty third. Yep. Yep. Uh, and congratulations for the. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, it was just clarifying. So after all that, they lost. Is that what you say? Uh, not in full time. They equalised. They it was a draw in full time. It was actually a draw, but they had to go to a golden goal. So who's got the trophy? I'm on the house of mine. So now we've got. 
So this all says to me that lots. But anyway, you're going, to, you're going to use a different language. That's okay. It sounds exciting, but anyway. All right, so I'll write about the event, not the win, because it didn't win. No, the event was a, a huge success. I misunderstood, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was all believing that they won. It's like a movie. You can imagine uh, writing a spirit of the same. This is all we have to know. Yeah. So, so uh, 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 Councillor Stanton has moved that the Mayor write a letter. Congratulations for the event. <laughs> I bet Lunel don't get a damn letter. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, no, they've been. Second. Thank you for your guidance. Happy second. Uh, and it's the uh, club patrons. That, is that right? Oh, or? no. Was that, is yeah, it was the board council as, as a key sponsor for season 2018. Pending. Uh, <laughs> any further debate? All those in favour? Against? Carrie, this is a little answer. Uh, <laughs> this is a couple of wilters. <laughs> uh, any other general business? Sorry, what's Christian Council about it? Um, yes, um, I caught off in um, park in the Myrtle Street, uh, the car park between Myrtle Street and uh, Rose Street, um, and uh, I when I attend my uh, gym class, I happened to park um, this park. I dashed into it in my car, but it's right alongside all the rubbish bins that were left out there from Thursday to the following Monday. Um, and I believe there was a collection, possibly in between that. There were about eight bins. There was about two to three commercial bins. <coughs> the smell was absolutely <coughs> atrocious. Just, just, just so we with Feel another movie script coming on here. All right. What is I'm, the? I'm moving for <laughs> um, uh, for action um, by the administration to improve the um, bin collection facility in that area. It takes up a whole. In which area? Sorry, just this, this, this the area. In the what is it? Whatever car park it is between Murphy Street and Rose Street. That is the common car park. Yes. And the bins were inside that car park. Yes, the bins are all lined up. In, That's where they put them all. A particular collection area or not, but they're all there. You, you drive in, right, and then there's all these bins all left out there for collection for days on end. They're overflowing. Rubbish was overflowing on the park, and the stink was terrible. So, so just to ask a question on your behalf, yes. uh, is this in our jurisdiction? Uh, I believe it is and happy to follow that up and, and write to the businesses and, um, in terms of improving that. Um, the actual car park itself, though, depending on where they place their bins, um, that will need to be looked at as well. Um, so help And also, one of them has... Yes. You park your car, all the bins are all scattered all around there. Some of them go out into the actual car park where you're driving. I had to get out and move two bins to get into the car park. Um, and one of the others has their bin up on the, the commercial bin, up on the path, where I don't know, understand how they collect it if the car's parked there. So I've just got all these queries about the rubbish collection. Could I suggest for your a very sensible motion, uh, Councillor, uh, that you use the words to to yes. to investigate and report on yes improve potential improvements too yes thank you. potential improvements too because you were now starting to mention bigger bins which are private bins and yeah the commercial you know, ones yeah. and the other council ones yeah. it's uh, not and bin collection services waste management services yes. might be better because that, that picks up yeah I mean we're very busy with all the yeah. uh, uh, people coming in there. Services, it's not very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do, do you speak to it any further? No. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? Councillor Stanton, do you speak to it? I think it's quite clear. Any further debate? All those in favour? Against? Carried unanimously. Any further general business? Councillor. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Governor Stanton. Oh, it's a long time since I've had to do this, but councils a long, long time ago, or a council a long, long time ago, determined that 10.30 was late enough for a council meeting. Yeah. And it's going to be longer than that. Council had to resolve to meet longer than that. So I'm now going to see if there's someone out there, 
And given that we have uh, one confidential item to do with tonight, and uh, <laughs> not a lot of business that people wish to do with uh, And potentially an urgent matter, uh, uh, does uh, somebody wish to move that we extend the meeting time to 11 p.m.? Councillor Barnett, do you wish to speak to your motion? Well, it's just that we have to two possibly important items to discuss and I don't think <coughs> it after how many decades of leaving long waiting for that time such a Do I have a second? Thank you, do I have a second? No. That concludes the debate, I'm going to say that. All those in favour, against is carried. Right, let's get on with it. Next item, so, Councillor Lowe, do you have a general business item? Uh, I, I'm not sure how to put this. Um, I noticed on the uh, the fence which is going across the top of Rose Street, there's some advertising placed on there, not just from the company who's doing the work, but there's a, a, an event outside our council area which is being advertised on there. There's a core flute or a banner of some description up there. So is that... Kind of okay, like you know, we don't think about that, or is that kind no, of generally okay? not? My understanding is it's third party advertising, never a bylaw that says it's not allowed. So, do we invest to head down there? In fact, there's minor action for action by the staff, probably out there tonight, or tomorrow. Put it on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any other items for general business? Any urgent matters? Councillor Barnett. Uh, yes, and I did um, email this uh, again to four elected members so late this afternoon. Um, so uh, is this one where I have to read it? Or I have to no, read it? no, I don't have to read it. Well, you can... Ideally, you have to read the government's manager advising me, so I, 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 uh, I didn't. I do speak to you. Do speak to you. I'm not going to pull you up if you don't, Councillor Barnett. Right, I'd just go straight to speak to <coughs> Yes, yes. Um, yeah, this has just come about um, uh, today um, when uh, residents uh, contacted me and they um, received a um, flyer uh, which um, uh, highlights the fact that the, um, uh, the application from uh, major redevelopment of St George's Nursing Home at 13 to 14 Fitzroy Terrace, Fitzroy. Plans have been lodged with the State Commission Assessment Panel. Um, so um, as my motion um, outlines, uh, not only you know, residents are concerned, but uh, I think um, it sends up alarm bells for us. And so we, our um, previous development assessment panel actually uh, refused it and also it's the subject of uh, hundreds a hundred residents uh, all around there um, not being uh, in favour. Uh, so um, I think it draws a, a lot of um, uh, implications for us as a council. Um, I do understand that a, um, one of the residents living nearby at Cashin Fitzroy Terrace has received today an email uh, from the principal project of the major developments um, that uh, they're apparently drawing a list of details, a list of interest persons to be contacted at the time of public release if the application progresses to that stage. Mm. So we've got an opportunity here, I think, to try and nip something hopefully in the bud uh, instead of just being uh, reactive and, oh, it may go through and then we have lots of problems for our residents and I think for our um, own uh, planning assessment and heritage area, slap bang right in our uh, 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 heritage uh, conservation areas, uh, all sorts of implications. So um, that's why I have the help staff, thank you very much, uh, put this proposal to you as an urgent matter uh, so that we can be proactive with this and try and uh, get it um, sorted out. Uh, and if I have a question, I'm just wondering, uh, was council itself sent any um, uh, email or that from the major developments development division? If we're an interested party or not? Uh, 
received anything. Through the chair, we received nothing formal, but given there was a refusal that has been appealed and the appeal has been put on hold, we are aware that the St George's Nursing Home proponents have looked to exercise the $20 million major development trigger um, and has sought a view from Major Development Department as to whether or not they would accept um, it as a lodgement through that process. So we have that awareness, but no formal notification. So uh, with that sort of uh, background scenario, all just sort of happened this afternoon, so I beg your indulgence and hope that um, uh, you will um, uh, support the motion uh, so that we can be proactive uh, in this. Thank you. I do I second it? Yeah. Good motion. As do I. Any further debate? Mr. Harris? Just, just a question. I don't know how much buildings cost really, but to go from 9 million to 20 or 9 to 12 million to 20, what are they going to do? Put two coats of paint on it? Yes. Through, uh, through the chair, I can confirm that the $20 million proposal is 100 square metres smaller than the 9 to $12 million proposal. But going, but going up or...? In other places, they are, are, are putting in amber claims for seven storeys in three storey zones. Yeah. And it was it today's nine storey? Yeah. So was that today, tonight, tonight? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Technically today, but it was strange. Yeah. And Councillor Harris, do you have anything further? No. Thank you. Any further debate? Councillor Barnett, you need to sum up. Um, well, I hope I didn't sum up as we will obviously want to go home, so I just hope to use That concludes debate. All those in favour? Yes, carried unanimously. Thank you. Any further urgent matters? No, thank you very much. Uh, the next item is a confidential item. Someone can go to bed. Mm. Sale of 132 and 34 Prospect Road. Yeah. 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 Everybody else is gone. Yeah. Very good of you to stay this late. That's off to the Murdoch, Murdoch yeah. Empire that they have people like you there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, confidential item is uh, that was sent to you, item as through our process. Uh, the recommendation is in parts, so I'll take part one, which is to be moved into conference. Does somebody wish to move that way? So, Mayor Fruit, do I have a seconder? <coughs> That's the standard. Uh, any debate? All those in favour? Against? Carried? Good. Unanimously. Um, okay, 